history. Backdrop. Look at that. The Ferris wheel, the Olympic rings. We have so many athletes in this awesome park right now that have been competing today and getting to ready, getting ready to watch some of the very best in the world. I'm Olympian Terry Tellefson, and I am thrilled to be a part of the broadcast team today. We are in store for some awesome running, some jumps. And we've seen athletes from the age of two all the way up to 98 years old today. As you can see, they're finishing still right now. But we are thrilled to have you as a part of this broadcast today. We're going to bring some of the amazing athletes. As I said, 15 world championship and Olympic gold medalists. We also have 13 Olympic medalists, 24 world championship medals, nine American records, and get this, four world records. Holders, we are so fun. We are so excited, and it's going to be a fun day today. But listen, I want to bring someone in today that's helped not only transform this park. We're standing right here on a track that was built over the last three days. It's fast. It is ready for the athletes. And I want to bring in CEO of the Atlanta Track Club, Rich Canal. Rich is also an Olympian and also a bronze medalist at the World Champs. Rich, this is a pretty spectacular already today. Yeah, we've been planning on this for quite some time, and it's great to see sort of the fruits of our labor as the athletes get ready to show the fruits of their labor, uh, I guess, probably the next three hours. How hard has it been to get all of this to come about and come to fruition? Well, uh, the 150-meter straightaway, that's dead flat. That has had, to your point, two-year-olds to 98-year-olds to Olympic medalists, world record holders right here. So we're as excited as we could be. What you guys do at Atlanta, Atlanta Track Club, excuse me, I get so excited, but Atlanta Track Club really brings in such great events. I mean, you've had the Olympic trials, and you've had USA National Championships. Now you're having this. What is the vision? Well, the vision started in 1964 when we were born and, and got expedited when the Peachtree Roadways Peachtree Road Race was created in 1970. 110 finishers, it's now the world's largest 10K. We want Atlanta to become sort of the, the epicenter of all things running, whether you're a marathoner, whether you're a sprinter, whether you're a cross country runner, hurdler, and of course in the pole vault in the background. What's your hope for today? A world record. Ooh, he said it. I mean, do you miss racing? No, uh, but, but I would be lying. I'd be lying if I said when we set this up the other night when we were doing our run through with the lights on, that I didn't do a stride or two. Yeah, you did. How'd the track feel? Felt fast. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you guys do here. We're excited to get this show underway. Thanks for being here. All right, Tim, here you go. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, uh, looking forward to 16 sprint and sprint hurdles races here on this very fast track. They've spent the last three days constructing meticulously. It's been washed with jet sprays. They've done everything possible to make that blue strip exactly right. The runners will be running, as you see that shot, from left to right. The, that's the uh, eastern end of the park where the start is to the top of that uh, blue track. Now, Comfy position right by the finish line. Boy, have we got a privileged Comfy position. There's the schedule, the run with Maud. That was this morning. The uh, Atlanta Youth City Games, the Adidas Atlanta Youth City Games has been carrying on. Youth track and field zone continues as well here on the track. The running City Mile has been going on for the last hour or so. I don't think they're finished yet. And the pole vault women, well, they've been going now for about half an hour. We'll bring you a the best of that action up to date. And then we have the road races, a women's mile, a men's mile, a women's 600 meters, and a men's 600 meters. Quick circuit for those uh, road races. Unusual to have the 600 on the road, but uh, the Mondo Footspeed Girls finals at 6.45, and the uh, trials for women 100 meter hurdles. That's the heats, two heats for each of those. The first uh, two from each heat go through by right to the final with one non-automatic qualifier. The pole vault men, 7.15 p.m., followed uh, the, uh, following the women's hurdles and the men's hurdles, they'll be raised some three inches or so. Again, two trials, those are heats for the men's the hurdles. Then we're into the fast fellas on the flat, the men's are 100 meters, uh, two heats for them as well. Uh, the women's 100 meter heats as well, we're calling them trials here. 
one of Footspeed Boys' fun. It's absolutely wonderful. These youngsters are getting mixed in with the elite world-class athletes that are here, whose season, of course, the elite athletes, will culminate as World Championship in Budapest, Hungary, in uh, 16 weeks' time. Uh, the mascot race, of course, uh, goes after the uh, 150s. Those are qualifying races as well. We're expecting, as Rich Canal said, some very fast times here. Maybe, we should whisper it, probably, world record. The women's 150 is at 8.45. And the men's final of the 100, 8.55. There's not a lot of time between these races, but by the time all the excitement has died down, 100-meter hurdles uh, final for women. The men's 110-meter hurdles final fabulously strong fields don't let's forget the usa is the superpower in the sprint sprint hurdles globally women's 100 meters final and then things will be capped off at 940 that men's 100 150 meters final the uh, miles are happening right now athletes of varying abilities we had some fabulous sprinting on the track uh, over the last couple of hours from a lot of youngsters it's all about taking part getting out and do it Everyone a winner. Great to see these uh, public races. The run with Mod this morning, a 5K. Had some 2,000 runners taking part. And, uh, 2,000 virtually taking part. Raising, as I understand it, about $200,000 carry for uh, that fabulous uh, charitable cause. Yeah, I think it was about double what they thought last week, and it was a wonderful day to race. Lots of athletes out there. I mean, already, Tim, it is a party out here, and it is exciting. You know, one of the things that I wanted to say in the open, this is kind of the the start of the track season. We have nine weeks until the USA National Championships, and then we have six more weeks after that till the World Champs. So all of these athletes that have been competing before the real professionals get underway, like they are helping them with that hype and get excited for what is going to be a great year before Budapest, Hungary, where the World Championship will be this, this summer. Yeah, absolutely. Those US champs, of course. <laughs> the thing about the USA is that the... the it's the hardest team in the world to make. So once you've made the team, you're almost guaranteed a top eight spot at the Worlds and actually probably a medal as well, you know, exactly. especially in the sprints and the hurdles. We are seeing supreme athletes here today in those sprints and the hurdles. And these mile races, well, they bring out that competitive instinct for everybody. Of course, it's uh, irresistible, I guess, when you've got somebody up ahead of you that you think you can maybe catch. Well, I love it when you make that final right turn onto the track. You really get excited. You can see all of these athletes make that turn, know that all the other professional runners are going to be on this track later on. And I even saw some of the kids say, we were hitting the track up for the young, for the older athletes. So it's just been a really fun atmosphere already. And I don't know, maybe we should get out there, Tim. Maybe we should go race again. Yeah, you, you, After you, good luck show. on that. I'll, I'll, hold your, uh, I'll hold your gear. <laughs> well, the uh, women's pole vault, as I mentioned, started uh, at 5 o'clock local time. That's nearly 40 minutes ago. There is the uh, start list. Just six athletes, but the USA have 11 athletes in the current world top 20. The USA very, very strong in depth in this event. They still have the world record holder indoors. Jen Shure saw her at the hotel a couple of hours ago, although she retired. Last year, Sandy Morris holds the US outdoor record at five meters. But this is a strong lineup. Rachel Baxter, Kristen Brown, Emily Grove, Olivia Groover, Gabriella Leon, and Annika Newell of uh, Canada. The world best, by the way, set just yesterday in Doha in Qatar. That was uh, four meters 81 by Katie Moon of the USA. Well, let's have a look at some of the action from this uh, last 40 minutes or so. This is uh, Olivia Gruber, early favorite, failing out on the opening height of four meters of 26. Well, it was so fun yesterday, Tim, T chatting with some of the pole vaulters as they were warming up and they said they love it. They've done some of these street meets before at different venues and they were so excited to be here. You know, how can you not be excited when you look across and see the Olympic rings? That was uh, Kristen Brown also taking three shots at the opening height and not making it. This is uh, Emily Grove clearing it at the first attempt, four meters 46 for her. Grove, well, the, uh, the best of 475, so she should be pretty comfortable with that. This is Gabriella Leon on her second attempt, going here clear at uh, 4 minutes 46.
Rachel Baxter then. Baxter here. The uh, best of four metres 55. Rachel Baxter, second time attempt at 4.26. First time comes at 4.36. Second time clearance at 4.46. The crowd growing all the time here. Some uh, two and a half to three thousand expected in Centennial Olympic Park. Conditions really nice after a lot of rain yesterday. It's beautiful conditions today. That blue track, and track looking quite spectacular. There's the situation in the women's pole vault. Uh, Grove, Emily Grove, the 29 year old, number five USA all time. Grove, she's a very, very classy vaulter. She leads with the 456. Cleared that at the third time of asking. Annika Newell of uh, Canada. Well, the uh, lady on best of 465. And, uh, so far. She's uh, cleared 4.46 and has one more attempt left at 4 metres 56. Rachel Baxter has departed the competition at this height. Three failures for her, but lying second equal at the moment, Kerry. As you can see, a lot of the spectators are starting to really start to fill in here. A lot of them are running as well right now there were people that were running the miles and now they're getting their drinks and they're getting their sweats back on and things but this is quite the pole vault competition and really pretty cool to see that how they've built up that ramp you know it's a little bit of a of a slant going down the the ramp and it is something different than the that the athletes have to get used to well the, the ramp itself the surface they're running as we see emily grove the leader is uh, absolutely flat but yeah the ground it covers yep. is uh, undulating so they've had to adjust the height of the the supports underneath that blue surface so to make sure it, me it. This meets the stipulations of exactly. the, the, the rules of the sport so that these vaults are valid otherwise if that's a slightly downhill runway or it's got bump, lumps and bumps in it it wouldn't be the performances wouldn't be valid yeah and you were explaining that to me yesterday as we could see them building it oh it was a labor of love, took them a couple of days to get it exactly right. And I understand that from one end to the other, the differentiation was uh, one millimeter. That is, uh, well, about 125th of an inch. So they've done an incredible job. But Emily Grove, well, second at the USA Indoor Championships back in the middle of February in Albuquerque. A personal best of 466 was set indoors at that meet competition won by katie moon actually she was champion back in february and she is the, the usa vaulter who went up to 481 yesterday to win the doha diamond league the opening of the diamond league series the creme de la creme of a uh, stadium track meets in the uh, northern hemisphere summer months still only three women ever have gone over five meters it's an event that is uh, kind of waiting to move on i sometimes feel elena sinbaeva of russia set that world record meet of five meters and six centimeters back in 2009 in Zurich, Switzerland. Well, Emily Grove then has the competition won. Annika Newell failing her third attempt at four meters 56 along with Rachel Baxter. Baxter second, Newell third. This is Emily Grove. First attempt at four meters 66, 15 feet three and a half. No, and that didn't look close. The wind is gusting across Centennial Park. Conditions generally really nice, carry, but a wind has been gusting. I mean, you know, we are blessed because yesterday was yes. a pretty horrible day here. Yesterday, it rained for a lot of the day. Lots of rain, you know, a little bit concerned about how the track and the runway will be, but it's clear now and it looks good. 
Now, how close is this? Looks really determined, does Emily Grove. Hard to tell how close that was. The USA, of course, just has this production line of great vaults on the men's and women's side. There's such wonderful technical knowledge in the collegiate uh, circuit. I just love that close-up of her face. You could see her counting down her steps, five, four, three, right before she vaulted over. And even though she didn't get it, it's just so cool to get an inside look. We just had a real close-up of her face to see what these athletes go through. Not many of us have pole vaulted this high or ever. <laughs> and it's just really neat to see what they do to get themselves and then enough courage to get up and over. It is a scary event. It is a scary event. It's actually the most technically demanding by quite some margin. The, uh, the pole vault needs speed, brave, and spatial awareness. Well, this morning there was a run with Maud, 5K. It was a run or a walk held in downtown Atlanta. More than uh, 2,000 people took part. They were hoping for 1,000. They got 2,000. And it's in memory of Armand Arbery, a young black man who was killed while running in Brunswick, Georgia, back in 2020. A fabulous cause, the charity that's yeah. been set up. Jackie Joyner Kersey and his mom, Wanda Cooper Jones, they started the event today. And his birthday is on May 8th, so they're celebrating 29th his 29th birthday, but missing him dearly. And you know, just what an awesome, spectacular event that they put on raising, as you said, over $200,000. And the cause, if you want to know, was raising mental health resources yeah. for black boys. It's a, a brilliant, brilliant achievement of them. Set it up, get it underway, and start raising big, big money. 10 nations represented in that wow. event, by the way, and all 50 states were represented amongst the I 2,000. You know, that's what the Atlanta Track Club really does. Like, they bring this community together, and even though it was such a sad and terrible event, they bring it together, and they bring out something that a lot of people maybe never thought they would do, run a 5K for Ahmad. And, you know, around the country, around the world, people were running with them today. There was 2,000 virtual events, or virtual entries as well. So I hope they continue to do this. Pretty awesome. 4K total participants around the world today, in person and virtual. Well, we had a beautiful aerial shot just now of Centennial Olympic Park. Great that you can bring track and field to city centers, like bringing it to the people. It's catching on. It's a pretty common thing in Europe now. Where I come from, back in the UK, it's been going for many, many years. Tim, you actually were commentating in 1996 at the Olympic Games. I was, yeah, yeah. I was uh, commentating at a couple I mean, of Olympics how before fun that is as well. It to see <laughs> that there's do, you know, they're doing such great things in this city that was so so memorable for the Olympic Games. Yeah, no, absolutely right. And you know, you, you, I love the ambition of Atlanta Track Club. You know, they want this to be yeah. running central. They want to bring athletics to, track and field athletics to these citizens. And uh, that is what they've done today, sp inspiring kids. Running City USA, I love it. Look at that, beautiful shot. And at night, it's so beautiful as well. You can see it, everything lit up. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a party out here. I mean, you've got natural rhythm. I'm a Disney <laughs> trainer. I don't have rhythm. No, I, I've not. got no I chance. Have I'm going to stay here sitting down and trying to look busy. I am a, a distance runner. <laughs> so you know that rhythm. One foot in front of the other. I've seen your moves. You're a middle distance runner. You, you've got a little <laughs> bit of that, that rhythmic hey. blood. But I'm uh, no. I don't know. Anytime you come to one of their events here, though, Ronnell Blackman is always on the mic. He's hyping everybody up, but it is always fun. And that's what it's all about. I mean, you're even saying today, if you don't get out for a run, it's so, there's something missing in your in your day. And you know, that's what these people are feeling. And now they're gonna get to watch the world's best athletes right here in their city. I mean, I can't tell you how exciting it is. Well, I was telling you this morning about that, that quote from a, a guy who worked for the, the Times newspaper back in the UK. He was a fanatical runner, but he was a chief editor. And he said, a day when I'm too busy to run is a day when I'm too busy. Yeah. Now, that is great, and it sounds fantastic, but I have days when I'm too busy, <laughs> I have to admit. Today's well, been one of them. I don't know. I love a great 20-minute run, but, you know, uh, there are days too. But this today is, is pretty pretty spectacular and memorable. I hope we can continue to have it, but right there looking at Jackie Joyner Kersey just shooting the breeze with Lewis Johnson, who's going to come on the broadcast here soon. Like, this is what it's all about, Tim. Absolutely. 
one of the, the great legends of track and field for many, many years, Jack and Joyden Kersey, still holds that world record for the women's heptathlon, the seven events of track and field in a in a stadium, untouched. Yeah. I think only about three or four other women have ever gone over 7,000, and Jack and Joyden Kersey's world record is like 7,200 something. I mean, it yeah. is insanely special. Yeah, and she is here, and you know, Anna Hall is here, who just Yay. set the American record indoors and wants the world record so badly. So it's fun to see that Jackie Joyner is here watching maybe the next generation that could give that uh, world record and American record uh, a real shot at being broken. Emily Grove there taking her third and final attempt at 4 meters 66. She had the competition won, maybe the incentive not quite as strong as it would be if there was somebody still to compete against. But of course, this is, a, as I said, a really technical event and that, that technique needs to be polished up more so than in many other disciplines. You need to rumble into the season and get a few competitions under your belt and perfect your technique, your speed, your agility, your spatial awareness, uh, everything. The, uh, it's, 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 not, it's one thing to be strong from the gym. It's one thing to get everything right in your winter training, but you then have to sharpen that up and become the perfect uh, perfect machine to go through, get everything right for the pole vault. Emily Grove, though, good win today with that 4 meters 66, 15, uh, four, 56, excuse me, 14 feet, 11 and a half from uh, Rachel Baxter and Annika Newell with Gabriella Leon back in fourth. The wonderful thing, too, in so many disciplines, and including the pole vault, Kerry, is that top American athletes don't have to travel outside the country to get great competition. You yeah. know, a lot of athletes around the world, imagine being an Australian, they have to travel so far right. to get international competition frequently. But uh, top US athletes, especially in events like this, can go to a meet somewhere here in the USA and meet world-class competition, their own compatriots. I think that is a really good point. I mean, so many athletes have to do it all summer long. And it wears on you when you're living out a suitcase. It is really tough mentally and physically. And so for them to have some of these great domestic meets right now in the beginning of the season, you know, be able to see some of the international athletes that maybe live over here and train over here. But yes, you are 100% correct. It's hard to get on an airplane every single weekend and much less go across the country or across the world. It's, um, it's really nice for them to be here. Well, the Lyles Brothers uh, Sports Foundation. This is the Lyles Brothers with a uh, bunch of kids, kilometer kids that they're inspiring. I love the kilometer kids. What they do here at that Atlanta Track Club is pretty awesome. On May 7th, it's World Athletic Kids Athletic Day. So these guys are out inspiring them and getting them ready to do some great things. Talk about physical activity and, you know, look at them. They're, do they have any idea who they're asking questions right now? Two of the fastest men in the world. I love this initiative. You know, it'd be so easy to be easy. It would be it's simple for them to become world-class athletes and do nothing. But the Lyles Brothers Youth Foundation has a mission to empower youth through the advancement of health and wellness in communities nationwide. They don't have to be doing that, but I love the fact that they are doing it. But you know what they could have done is let the little kids win. They still were out kicking them on the, on the grass there, but oh, they are great guys for the sport. And look at this right here. Brothers showing them brotherly love, but also how to get excited about sport. There is uh, Emily Grove with Jen Shore. Still holds the world record to the right of picture. Which is Jen Shore for the uh, pole vault indoors. And Jen Shore marked five meters and three. That was set actually in Brockport, New York, back in January 2016. There is a great men's pole vault coming up as well. That uh, field includes one Sam Kendricks, twice a world champion, expecting big heights in the men's vault. Emily Grove has done more than enough today. Turned up, beaten those who else showed up. Her height, 4 meters 56. And that actually is the season's best prior to today with 4 meters 49 for this athlete ranks fifth in the USA all time. Could call her, I guess, a late developer, Emily Grove, because she's uh, she's going to improve, I'm pretty sure, on that personal best of 4 meters 75. Are you talking about Jen Scher being out here, just kind of rubbing shoulders with everybody? She really is the one that made everyone believe they could go higher and higher. And, and look at what the pole vaulting has done here in America. Well, some of these uh, milers still finishing. The uh, running City Mile performers. The uh, last waves that have been coming through now. We're expecting the last 
Guys and gals to be in at around 6 p.m. local time. And then at 6.05 is the first of our elite races. It's the road mile for women. That'll be followed at 6.15 by the men's elite road mile. You have to judge it right, though. Legs can get very, very full of lactic if you uh, misjudge it. And it'll be a tough last 100 metres or so on that blue track. Well, there's the start line. Top of picture, you can see the start line for those uh, mile races. And they, uh, that is over to the eastern side of the park. And they basically will make a run a giant sort of uh, horseshoe, clockwise horseshoe loop. Elite Women's Mile will get those uh, four road races underway. Well, Tim, we're going to talk a lot about this because we are here in Centennial Olympic Park, but a lot of the athletes yesterday when I was chatting with them were so excited to stand next to those Olympic rings on the start line. You know, a lot of the athletes, are that is their dream, to make that Olympic team and for them to look over and to see all five colors of those rings, it's pretty special. So it's, it's fun to hear them say, we get to start right next to it and then finish looking at them. Absolutely right. Of course, those Olympic Games in Paris, the French capital, next summer. This summer, the World Championships is uh, of massive significance as well. Track and field has its own stage. It's uh, one of the biggest sports tournaments in the global calendar of major sport gatherings is the World Track and Field Championships in Budapest in August, the uh, Hungarian capital. And then a year later, the best of the best will be gathering in Paris, where I think things are going to be pretty special. The French were uh, been trying to get the Olympics again for, for decades, and they have it at last, and they will not mess it up. You can be sure of that. I think the is it the opening ceremony that's along the Seine, actually on the river. Ooh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be so. I mean, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe. I don't know if you remember your <laughs> your uh, the opening ceremony at the Olympic Games. Mine are quite a ways away. I mean, 2004 was a long what time are you ago. Laughing at? The fact that mine was in black and white. <laughs> Well, we were just on a broadcast last week and you were telling everyone my age. But anyway, I wouldn't dream of doing that, you know, but, but I, that, that it's hanging there. I can do it again. <laughs> but that moment for me going out to the opening ceremonies is something I'll never forget. The chills, the deafening sound of the crowd. You know, it was almost like you were it was blinding with the amount of flash that was happening with the, the cameras. And it was just so fun. So I bet Paris opening ceremonies are going to be spectacular, as you said. Well, the Ferris wheel there has a sky view as its uh, title. So the Youth City Games uh, earlier on today saw waves of youngsters sprinting down the track here in Centennial Olympic Park. 100 meters fiercely contested by young boys and girls. Just watching that drive, that determination that each and every one of these athletes have had already today. Shows you that maybe one day they could be racing with those three stripes on or as a professional athlete. And you know what's great about track and field too is that there are so many world-class elite athletes here in in the park that, yeah. that kids can rub shoulders with. You know, they're accessible. There are there are sports where the stars are kind of up right. there in lights and you, you you can't get near them. They're protected. But track and field is one of those sports where actually the athletes are pretty chill and, and love to mix with the crowds, mix with the kids, and inspire them. Well, there's the start line right in the centre of your picture. The start line of this. Uh, Elite Women's Mile, just seven competitors in it. Five of them are from uh, Atlanta Track Club. They uh, train together, the five athletes. But the best of them, possibly Ali Wilson, who's a sub two minute, 800 meter runner. Just missed the World Championships last year when she came fourth in the uh, USA Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Well, Tim, we know that this course is a little bit uphill and then it comes down. What do you think you'd do on this course right now as a middle distance runner back in the day? Would it be uh, your strength? 
Ah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Road miles are, are, are very, very deceptive. It's, they it's are. always sounds a bit stupid to say it, but it's further than you think. A lot of people <laughs> misjudge it, you know, and they kick too early. On a track, you know, you've got four laps. You can sort of like you can. You don't have to be clever to get that right. But a road mile, it's there's a, there's not really the same indicators. Right. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how they do go here. Well, they've all been out looking at the course. They were running it yesterday. They're actually practicing those final two turns to really see if they could accelerate into it and get that good positioning that they're going to need to do to, in order to get that final stretch on the track. Well, we can take a look in a moment at uh, a map of the course here in downtown Atlanta. As you can see there, I said it was a giant horseshoe shape. It's an elongated horseshoe, I guess you could say. They start very close to the finish and then uh, run southwards for uh, well, about a half a mile, almost half a mile, before taking that sharp right-hand turn, curving around the edge, uh, coming back towards the center of the park, coming in the main gate right beside us, and uh, finishing with about 120 meters on the blue track here, right beside our commentary position. And it is a strong field. Favorites, well, Hannah Seagrave against Ali Wilson, I guess, Carrie. You're uh, right on top of the best U.S. athletes, uh, Hannah Seagrave, a 4.44 performer, Ali Wilson, a 4.26, and Taryn Rawlings as well will yeah. be a real factor. I was waiting for you to say, Tara Ra Taryn Rawlings, she is the one to watch, 4.24. She's also a very good 800-meter runner, so she has that speed, that strength. One of the things that I like about Taryn is she's coming off the BAA mile that she ran here just a few weeks ago in Boston, so she has that road mile experience just this year already, but Ali Wilson, you said it, the hometown girl, you know, she ran last week at the Penn Relays. She ran the 800. She won her first Penn Relays watch. was a big thing that she wanted to do. But she's so thrilled to be right here at home racing in Atlanta. And uh, Taryn Rawlings was a sub two minute 800 meter runner last year. So she has very good speed as well. Coached by Terence Mahan, who we know well as one of the, the most experienced distance coaches, middle and long distance coaches in the USA. So the seven athletes on the line then, ready to go here. And you can see that red kit of the Atlanta Track Club. They are all right there. Just go through that field for you. Gemma Finch, Presley Weems, Rachel Walters, Anna Camp Bennett, Taryn Rawlings, Hannah Seagrave, and Ali Wilson. Ali Wilson, a 404, 1500 meter runner, has great 800 speed. She's a 158, 800 meter runner. And talking to her yesterday, I was saying, uh, will you just sit and kick and use that speed, let the others, because about the first 100 meters, first yeah. 100, 100 yards or so is slightly uphill. There's it a is. very slight climb. And you know, you think about wanting to maintain and not get too much into that lactic acid. <laughs> Your lactic acid's gonna be raging in this first 150 meters. Well, a world record for the road mile has uh, just been started, so to speak, as being officially recognized. Since the 1st of January this year, World Athletics, the world governing body of track and field, have said they will recognize world records for road mile, but the men's first world record will be recognized when a time comes in under 350, and the women's world record will be recognized when there's a time of under 419. Now, those are going to be tough, tough targets on this circuit here today, I think. Welcome to Jenna. Presley Weems of the United States, second in the 2021 SEC Indoor Championships in the 800 meters. Rachel Waters of the United States, better known as an 800 meter runner. She has a best of 204. We'll see what happens in this mile today. Anna Camp Bennett of USA, 2021 NCAA champion in the 1500 meters. Another American, Taryn Rollins, finalist in the 2022 U.S. Championships over 1,500 meters. Hannah Seagrave has made the ride across the ocean from Great Britain, a three-time NAIA champion for Milligan College in the 800 indoors and outdoor. And rounding out the field is Allie Wilson of the United States, the 27-year-old finished second in the 2022 U.S. Indoor Championships in the 800 meters and there is our starting lineup for the women's mile our first event of the evening and now we turn it over to our race callers it is all yours thank you lewis the seven athletes on the line then about to get underway 
and they are racing this running city mile for elite women negotiating his first hundred yards hundred meters or so up a slight slope before they take the uh, first right hand turn always hard to judge road miles you haven't got those regular markers like you have on a track as to to indicate each hundred meters each lap that goes by it's uh, kind of almost subconscious carry your understanding of how to gauge your effort over a full track mile but a road mile is a real different beast it definitely is and you know there are times where you just run straight down one of the streets but it's a no turns but i think the turns is what actually makes this race fun once you have turns you can really lean into them you can sort of lose people on the turns so i think they're going to be a little bit more conservative in this early part of this race and then once those turns start that's where you see some separation tara rawlings right there in the in the lead along with ali wilson to her right yeah, Taryn Rawlings right in the center of the pack there at the front. She is the quickest on paper. Fifth in that Boston Road Mile that he mentioned. Just, uh, what, two or three weeks ago. Three weeks back now. Runs for the Gold Coast Track Club down in San Diego. Has good speed, good strength as well. And right on her shoulder there to left of pictures. We look at them. Ali Wilson. Quicker over 800 meters. Almost as quick over the mile. At the pen relays just last week, she ran 201 for 800. She won there in tough conditions. Yeah. One thing I really like about Allie Wilson, though, is she is as tough as you can get, and that's what I think will really favor her on the roads. We've seen her fall at the end of an 800 meter. Last year, we saw that actually when she finally broke two minutes, she just ran so hard. She ran faster than her legs, her legs gave out. She did have a little bit of an injury last year, so we really didn't get to see that top end speed. But I think that this woman is really on the verge of really having a big breakthrough. Her strength is there. Her speed is there. She was fourth last year at our championships in America here. So she missed that um, world championship team. She wants it. She's hungry. And you can see that today. Yeah, Ali Wilson will be that much more determined to make the team, having some so come so close last year at those US championships to making the world championship team. Well, the three months of premium membership in the Adidas running app as an Atlanta City Games exclusive. If you want to go for that, then uh, get that QR code on your phone and join the fun. A little bit of a downhill slope here now, and the two big two that we expected to contest this, Wilson and Rawlings, beginning to stretch this pack, Gary. Yeah, definitely on that first turn. Like I said, 226 for the first 800 meters. So we knew this was going to be the slower part of the race. Now I think we're going to see some of the wheels start to turn. Allie Wilson may be taking a step back here. Taryn Rawlings starting to really push this pace. Just interesting, These bo both of these two top women have now broken two minutes for the 800 meters. They have very good leg speed. So we're going to have to see what happens here in the final, final 300 meters. Taryn Rawlings pushing it hard. The red strip of Ali Wilson matching us for stride for stride as they head through on this down slope with 3.30 on the clock. They've got about a minute of running to gun and Rawlings really digging deep here, turning the screw, trying to break Wilson. Wilson in red in second place. Has got the quicker 800 meter speed, probably the quicker finishing speed. Rawlings therefore wants to take that sting out of her uh, compatriot as they come down towards Centennial Olympic Park. Rawlings has the gap. She will sense that. She hasn't looked over her shoulder, but she will sense that she has a significant gap now on Ali Wilson. Wilson has got to keep chasing her. Dig deep here. They get up onto the track here in Centennial Olympic Park, and they've got about 120 meters to run. They've got the park to their right now. This final right-hand turn and into the park. 4.15 on the clock. Ali Wilson still chasing hard, but Rawlings has the gap. She's worked so hard for this. She's really dug deep to get this gap. And strong, powerful running from Taryn Rawlings on the track now towards the line. Watch the clock. This is a really solid time, considering the first half was slow. It's Rawlings who comes home to take the win. Look at the clock. It's going to be about 440 on the clock. That's a great win for Taryn Rawlings. Ali Wilson battling away for second place. Well, that's a fabulous win from Rawlings. The time about 4.40 there, 40, 4.40.11. And that was doing it the hard way. 
taking it from a long way out. Superb. Well, Taryn Rawlings really using that first 800 meters to get into this race. Allie Wilson from the Atlanta Track Club was the one that was leading for most of that first 800. And then a little bit of change here. And as you can see, Taryn Rawlings really using that downhill, the last part of the race, to power through, cracking the tape here in what is unofficially 440.11. Awesome running there by Taryn Rawlings. Congratulations. And that winning time, 440.1 quicker than she ran in Boston three weeks back. I am at the finish line here with our winner of our women's mile, Miss Terry Rollins. So you had a little gap. So about this route. Definitely the hardest part was the uphill, the first 400. I just had to stay relaxed and stay calm through that. And then I knew once I got halfway, I could start pushing it. Definitely. So you could have been in a track this weekend, but you chose to be right here in Atlanta for a road race. Why? Um, I mean, this is a huge Adidas event, and I was so excited to be a part of it. And I love the road. I love running the road miles. So I was super excited to do it. Well, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Taryn Rollins. Well, the upslope from the start, a little bit longer than uh, I was told, but uh, no doubting the winner there. Rawlings really happy with that run, and, and rightly so, Carrie. That power, you can see that. 200 meters to go, she likes that. Every athlete likes seeing 200 meters to go. She had to make that first right-hand turn, not even a look back. She really just accelerated into that turn, and then really in that final 150, once she got onto the track, she poured it on, and she looked great. 440.1. Anna Kemp Benning had a great final stretch here on the track, and closing in on Allie Wilson, Allie taking third. What a phenomenal race to kick off this event. Absolutely. That's a pretty dominant run by Taryn Rawlings, winning by exactly three seconds. Really great strength to uh, take that win. Yeah, Camp Bennett come through late. And a personal best for her. Superb. Second place. Well, everyone Men's loves mile. a great Sorry, negative split. And you could see that going through in 226, finishing in 440. And now we'll have to see what the guys do. Yeah, there's that immense field. Eight athletes in this men's race. Seven of these eight men have run under four minutes for the mile. It is, a, again, a really high caliber field. Look out in particular for Sam Brackel, the 28-year-old American. His personal best for the mile is 350. That was uh, back in 2019, mind you. But he has run 351 indoors this indoor season just gone. And uh, look out, too, for Paul Ryan. Ryan there, a 352 miler. His road mile best is 356, but he won the Drake 1500 meters last weekend in 340, which is worth about 357 per mile in pouring rain, horrible conditions. Uh, but recently beat Grant Fisher over 1500 meters as well. Here we go, everybody. It's event number two, the men's mile. The men's turn to get on the streets of Atlanta and run this mile, which is a bit of a tricky course. First half mile is uphill. We'll watch and see what happens. In this event, we have eight competitors, and let's start with number one, Josh Hoey, six in the 2020 U.S. Indoor Championships, over 800 meters. We also have Erica Vila of the United States, 2022, 2021, excuse me, U.S. Road Mile Champion. Also from the USA, Paul Ryan, second in the 2022 U.S. Road Mile Championships. Guys with lots of experience here out of the roads. Sam Prakel will be towing the line, two-time indoor U.S. champion, over 1,500 meters and 3,000 meters. Mason Furlick is here of Team USA, third in the 2021 U.S. Olympic Trials in the steeplechase. 
Drew Hunter of the USA, 2019 U.S. Indoor Champion, over two miles. Hobbs Kessler, an experienced athlete, 20 years old, a U.S. high school record holder over 1,500 meters, the mile and boat set in 2021. And finally, from the Atlanta Track Club, it's Shane Strike of the United States. The 26-year-old is a U.S. record holder in the 1,000 meters indoor. Okay, here we go with the men's mile, and back over to Tim Hutchings and Kerry Tollison. Once again, thank you, Lewis. Yes, the athletes are just about to get underway. And they are racing now. Very small, high-caliber field, just as in that women's elite mile a few minutes ago. Now, who's going to take it on here? Strike in the red, left of picture. Well, Strike knows these ra roads around here in Atlanta. He runs for the Atlanta Track Club. He is an American record holder indoors, and he wants to win. He's always gutsy, and he gets out there. But I think a lot of people are looking at Sam Preco. He's won three USATF championships this year, and just last week, he won on the roads at the Drake Relays. He won the one-mile road championship. So he kind of has that confidence coming in. He seems to be winning a lot of races, and I think he's having a big breakthrough this year. Well, there's that QR code once again. Get your phones out and just take a look. See if you want to join in. Three months of premium membership in the Adidas running app. Eric Avila, the 355-miler, just uh, getting his nose in front now. As a Shane Strike, who started fast, has eased back. Well, Tim, you know this four-minute barrier is so huge still in, in the world of running, and we are celebrating 69 years of that this year since Roger Bannister broke that. A lot of these guys are sub-four-minute milers, way under sub-four minutes for most of them. But it is one of those days that we need to celebrate this big barrier that was broken 69 years ago. Well, the first 400 meters very much on the conservative side, 66 seconds, well outside 66 seconds for the first 400. Same pattern as in the women's race. It's a race of two halves, I guess you could say. The first uh, 400 slightly uphill, and then it flattens out a bit, and then that very, very quick second half with quite a bit of downward drop onto the track. The course is record eligible, by the way, even though there's this uh, rise in the center of the course. The uh, the, the amount of elevation between start and finish matches or fits within sport, the sports rules of one meter per kilometer. So there's only about four and a half feet difference between the start and the finish height. As uh, Avila here continues to push hard. Now just get the impression he's applying some pressure here. Strike running the shortest line on the inside in that red, uh, red for uh, Atlanta Track Club. He's actually the data analytics coordinator of Atlanta Track Club and he's pushing hard here and little gaps just beginning to appear. Well, Eric Avila is used to running on the roads. He's won a championship on the road for the U.S. He likes that. But here is Paul Ryan coming up on his left. That guy is a guy you got to keep your eye on. Paul Ryan, he's a 352 miler. He is somebody that has sort of a new name in the sport, but he is really one that is pouring it on the last couple years and is definitely a name we need to know. Paul Ryan on the left of Eric Avila. Well, you know, winning is a great habit to have. He won the Drake Relays 1,500 meters uh, last weekend, 3.36, three weeks ago, to beat Grant Fisher, who's a fabulous top performer from the USA. That was worth about 3.53 for the mile. And Avila now beginning to stretch away. He was only 13th in the Boston Athletics Club uh, 5K back in the middle of April in 13.35. But he has good strength and maybe trying to make that strength tell now and take the sting again out of the tails of the really quick finishes. And Hobbs Kessler right there in second place. He is the man that so many people know about from his high school days, but he had his first professional win at the BAA Mile just three weeks ago. And look at him closing in. He is not letting Eric have any inch. Uh, he is trying to stay right on his shoulder and maybe planning for that finishing kick. Well, Kessler in second place, before he went pro as a runner, he was an international rock climber and fl frequent U.S. representative, Kessler, and he's hanging on to the tails of Vila here now as they negotiate this final right-hand turn. This is going to be a very, very quick last 120 on the track now. Avila now kicks hard. Prekel on the outside, coming up there and left of picture. And Kessler on the near side as well. Three abreast. It's anybody's race at the moment between these three. Kessler battling for the line. Is Prekel going to get there first? It's a long, long stretch down this last 50. And it is Prekel that gets it there. Wow. Very, very close indeed. And that winning time. Well... Again, it's not a circuit for really fast uh, 
clockings for the great racing. Prekel getting it 4.3.4. 4 minutes 3.4 seconds. Hobbs Kessler, 4 minutes 3.64 seconds. There was uh, about a meter in it at the line. Well, that is exactly what we want to see. Changing of the guard every which way here as we watch Eric Abla try to take these final turns. Hob Kessler getting right up in him, right up in there. And then it looks like Sam Pareko kind of just moving to the inside, really using his finishing speed to sneak in, get around, and hold his position. And there he is breaking the take just over four minutes in 4.03.4. Well, Kessler won that Boston Road Mile three weeks back, so that is a heck of a big name that uh, he has beaten there, Sam Prakel. He is, uh, on paper, the quickest in the field on the track, 350. He's run indoors for the mile. Really, really impressive finishing speed. Well, Sam Prakel is having quite the year. He has had three USATF championships in the last three months. He won the indoor 1500 meters. He won the indoor 3000 meters. And he just won the USA road mile championships last week. And now he's coming here to the Atlanta City Games, the Adidas Atlanta City Games. And he's showing his sponsor that he is serious and he is ready for a big year. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the full result of that men's elite mile now. Prekel winning 4.3.4 from Hobbs Kessler, 4.3.6 for Eric Avila, 4.3.92. Did everything he could to break the fast finishes, but uh, gets that place on the rostrum anyway. And Drew Hunter back in fourth place, a couple of seconds back. 5.68. And a big congratulations to Drew Hunter. He's a longtime Adidas athlete, but he just became a dad. So he's running for a lot today. Just about a month ago, I believe, he had his new baby with his wife. So congratulations, Drew. Running needs nothing. It's always been your number one fan. Well, just a couple of minutes until the next race here in uh, these Atlanta City Games. Inaugural Adidas Atlanta City Games in Centennial Olympic Park. Carrie, I know you'll be uh, very, very invested in this next event, the Elite Women's 600 metres. That'll be followed by the 
the men's 600 meters short and sharp not much room for error in this one not at all and we are going to have some major clashing of athletes which is going to be so fun that's what it's all about and i think the athletes really are excited to be here and to see where they're at even though it's really early in the season they have a long ways to go to world champs but you know that's what it's all about right seeing where you're at and then going home and adjusting or putting back in just some more work if that's what you need to do yeah and some athletes for events like this early season choose to change train through it you know they sort of they don't want to interrupt their training like they might do if it was yeah. a, a massive competition or a championships they'll they'll train pretty hard through this week and come into this with maybe with slightly tired legs um so you know everybody approaches these things in different ways and everybody constructs their season in different ways i mean in europe you know what is it we're, we're early may the track and field season is only just getting going right. a lot of college athletes here in the states have been racing for six weeks they've been racing a long time and we as professional athletes well i say we because i feel like i'm still one but i'm not um but you know we are able to jump into some of those races so some of the professional athletes have been racing on and off all year long but i do like that we're here doing something different you know some people are on the roads and they have never run on the roads or they have to use different you know styles and different abilities to get through the ups and downs of like a 600 meters that we're going to see here soon it is really unusual to have a 600 meters that would be one and a half laps of a stadium track on the roads i mean i've never seen anything yeah. like that quite so short you know you, you get half miles and miles occasionally miles are pretty common but 600 meters i hope this takes off these street races are so cool well, let's take a look at the course map now. It's very different to the mile race. They just hug the perimeter of the park from the start line uh, along Henrietta Street. And uh, Henrietta Street, or Marietta Street, northwest is what they negotiate before they take that final right into the finishing straight. Very, very short and sharp, this one. And there is a fabulous rematch in this first race, the women's uh, elite 600 meters from last week's Penn Relays, where RJ Wilson beat Natoya Gould of Jamaica over 600 meters it was 124.45 to 124.96 there less than half a second between them and they're both back there is the uh, lineup and lewis johnson is down near the start <laughs> okay, we begin with the uh, lane assignments in lane one Brittany avini 2021 acc champion in the 400 meters Sammy Watson, 2018 NCAA champion, over 800 meters. Kayla Edwards, third in the 2023 U.S. Indoor Championships, over 800 meters as well. Olivia Baker of the United States, second in the 2022 U.S. Indoor Championships in the 800 meters, fifth outdoors, and she's a member of the Atlanta Track Club. Courtney Okolo of Team USA, 29-year-old, is 2018 World Indoor Champion, over 400 meters. And our Jamaican visitor, an incredible talent for, for sure, Natoya Gould, 2019 Pan American Games champion over 800 meters, Jamaican record holder over 800 indoors and out, and then the one and only Ajay Wilson of the United States. And Ajay is a 12-time U.S. champion and the 2022 World Indoor champion over 800 meters. So here we go with the women's 600-meter dash out on the roads, and now for the call, Tim Hutchins and Kerry Tollison. Seven athletes then for this uh, 600 meters. RJ Wilson holds the American record from uh, six years ago, 122.39. We're not expect expecting it to be that quick. They uh, hug that right-hand curb as the, of the park and going off very quickly indeed is Baker, Olivia Baker. This is exactly how Olivia Baker likes to run. She's aggressive, she's tough, she's coming off of an injury, but she had her, one of her best years last year, and I'm not surprised to see her. Along with Kayla Edwards out front there as well. Kayla Edwards had a great indoor season, but she suffered a little bit. She has Graves' disease now, and she just figured that out. So she's figuring out her racing now and feeling good, and really was coming around every single race that she had this past indoor season. Well, Olivia Baker is unbeaten this year, loves to lead and trying to hug that inner curve, but now the other names coming to the fore, and Ghoul of Jamaica, so experienced, Natoya Ghoul, the Jamaican record, as we said, 156 for 800, her PR, she's great at 400 to a 51 second 400 meter runner, and now RJ Wilson at the front, leading down this, through this final right-hand turn and onto the track, Ghoul is behind her, about two meters behind as they come onto the track, 120 meters to run, RJ Wilson kicks hard for the finish line here, she's so, so tough to beat, such an astute racing brain, and Natoya Ghoul battling away there, coming down the outside as well as Sammy Watson, 
but uh, she's pulling away now, RJ Wilson. That is a dominant win from the American 28-year-old. Won the pen relays last week, wins here in Atlanta today. Fabulous running. One thing that Ajay Wilson's been working on, we have seen her win time and time again, year after year, but indoors this year, she was trying to stay patient and really use that finishing kick. She said she didn't have that time last week at the Penn Relays when she had to outkick Ghoul. And today you could see that patience again when she started this race, she was in the back. And then she just started picking people off and that speed and that endurance together is so vital for Ajay Wilson. Look at her here, so calm, so collected. She she goes to her arms a little bit. You can just see a little bit more knee lift, and she has a little slight look over her right shoulder to make sure she's okay, and look at the power she has. Well, Tara is down near the finish line, I think, with our winner, RJ Wilson. I am at the finish line here with Miss RJ Wilson. Now, RJ, you know you usually run the eight, so you ran a 600 today. It's a little shorter than what you used to. Did it feel like it? It did. The hill kind of threw us for a loop a little bit, but um, getting to run a little bit shorter, a little bit quicker, working my foot speed was fun. So if you were to warn somebody about this race, what would you tell them? Um, I would just tell them probably to walk the course first, just so you have an idea of where the markers are and when you come onto the track, finish hard. So give us one goal you have this outdoor season. Um, this outdoor season is to be consistent be competitive, and just really put myself in the mix and races. And continue to finish strong like you always do. Yes, of course. <laughs> Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Ajay Wilson. Thank you, guys. Super consistent, Ajay Wilson. Yeah. She is so tough to beat. She's very strong. She can make a charge from a long way out, Carrie. She's, she got, she's got everything up her sleeve, you know, everything you could need, whether it's a great sprint finish or the strength to lead from a long way out. And you know what I love about her is her consistency, but yet her drive. Like, she's been in this sport at such a high level for so long, and she still absolutely loves it. Now, that, I think, is probably her best trait that she has, still has the passion and the drive and the commitment to still get out there day after day, train and race the way she does. She's a class act on and off the track for sure. Smart race from her too, to lead through that final right-hand curve onto the track. Anybody that wanted to come past her had to take the wider outside line. But uh, I thought I saw a slight stumble from Natoya Ghoul as she came up onto the track with about yeah. 120 to go. but. RJ won that very comfortably indeed, that winning margin, well over a second, much uh, unlike last week when it was a much, much smaller gap between the pair of them. Well, Tim, the, uh, the lactic acid, the way that their muscles fatigue on the roads is far different than on the track. And for them to have to come up off of the, the road to the track, even that is using different muscles. And so the lactic acid, the fatigue, you can maybe see that in Natoya Galul. Well, she's a, she's a fascinating athlete, RJ Wilson. She's been around for years yeah. and years. Since and she high was, school. you know, she was a phenom when she was 17. She was winning, nas winning national titles, and uh, at 28 now, I feel like she's been around about 15 years. But it's not for sure of that. But what I love about her is they're still trying to, you know make her craft even better. They're working on different things all the time. And that I think is brilliant of her coach. Like he is trying to make sure that she is still finding a way to be the best athlete she possibly can as she gets older. You know, so many athletes refer or go back to what worked when they were younger and what worked when they won. Well, she's got to figure out how to reinvent herself almost year after year to be able to be the best. But she's been very consistent with her old coach, Derek Thompson. Yep. He's been a great guy, he's always there. Uh, she said to me yesterday, she's had a fabulous winter training, and it's uh, looking very much like that for RJ Wilson. So super consistent and uh, looks happy. I it's well so. set for a big, big summer. The reigning world indoor champion. The men's 600 meters coming up. Uh, that's their final road race of the day. And then we get on to the fast fellas and, and women on the track. Running needs nothing. It likes fast times, slow times, but most of all, good times.
Running needs nothing. It was born free. Goalpost free. Hoop free. Finish line free. Running only takes two legs. Sometimes not even. It doesn't care who gets there first. Whether you're breaking records or setting a record for too many breaks. Running just needs you to show up and run as you are. Back to Centennial Olympic Park, where we have here in Atlanta the men's elite 600 meters to come, and there is the lineup. And what a lineup this is! Bryce Harper is in uh, good form. This is his debut, though, for 600 meters on the road. The world indoor bronze medalist last year over 800 meters, fourth in the world championship back in 2019. But the man that's in super form at the bottom there, the Puerto Rican Ryan Sanchez, is the eighth fastest man in history over this distance just seven weeks ago, running 113.97. Anything around 115, 116 is super fast. Aj Wilson, the men are ready to take the roads here in just a second, and Tim and Kerry ready to make this call. And so with this field of seven, Let's identify everybody and get it going. Here today from Jamaica is Ray J. Hamilton, 2018 NAIA champion over 400 meters. Yeah, where are the Jamaican at? There we go. All right. From the United States, Jeremiah DeLuca won the 800 at the Georgia Southern Classic last weekend. Congratulations. Cameron Jones of the United States is here, 2021 ACC champion over 800 meters. Christian Harrison as well set his 600 PR at the Penn Relays last weekend. Congratulations to him. Abraham Abe Alvarado of the United States, a 27-year-old, a member of the Atlanta Track Club, is finished second in the 2019 U.S. Indoor Champion, chip over 1,000 meters. Ryan Sanchez is here from Puerto Rico. The 24-year-old is the bronze medalist of the 2019 Pan American Games, over 800 meters. And then finally, a name you know very well, Bryce Hopple of the United States, bronze medalist in the 2022 World Indoor Championships, over 800 meters. Okay, here we go, to the roads, the men's 600 meters. Tim and Kerry, take it away. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah, strong field, this one. And Bryce Hopple making his debut here, U.S. Indoor Champion, just last uh, February, three times U.S. Indoor Champion over 800 meters, Bryce Hopple. But they have blasted away here from the gun. Boy, oh boy, they are pushing hard over the first 20, 30 seconds here in Atlanta. This is no holds barred. Well, what I love about the 600 meters is you have the guys that are so quick off the line for 400 meters moving on up into distance in the distance. And then you have those 800 meter runners that are coming down. It's a clash that everybody would love to see. And we get to see it right here. Well, that right-hand turn, not easy to negotiate the speed these fellas are moving at. Christian Harrison towards the rear at the moment, and there is very little quarter being given at the front there. Pack of five easing down before they take this final right-hand turn. 55 seconds on the clock now, and into the park they come. This is anybody's race as they take this final right-hand turn. 120 meters to run. Hopper pushing hard. Sanchez to the left there in the white headband. Ryan Sanchez kicking hard, but Jones looking strong too. Cameron Jones, Hopple, has he got the legs to get all the way to the line in first place? Yes, he has. Hopple hanging on hard, kicking away there, and winning by about a metre and a half from Cameron Jones. Brilliant running from him. Bryce Hopple is becoming the 800 meter runner in the States to watch. He is so race savvy. He has won now time and time again, and he loves the big W. And you can see that today, just seeing him have his composure, hold himself on a course where he was getting a little bit squeezed into those cones, and then he finishing strong on this, this track here. But Bryce Hopple is a name we need to watch here in the US, and time and time again, he's proving he needs to be one in the conversation. Well, Bryce Hopper looking really delighted with that run. Beating some big names there. Guys in very good form as well. And that home straightaway, you know, it, it's a long, long straight. It's, uh, you get up onto it, and it's uh, probably deceptive. 120 meters flat out, 
and you would normally expect to come off a bend on a track and maybe have about 70 meters to go but that was tough the start was very quick too there wasn't much quarter given the time by the way one minute 17.13 is quick for this circuit with these right hand turns and this road surface carry really really high caliber performance well, yeah, taking it out really hard and using that speed that they have. But, you know, when it starts to set in, it is hard to hold on. Bryce Hopple just looking so strong right here. Look at him come through in this final, final 100 meters. Every single step had so much power. You know, when you come into a race where you know the world leader is in this, in this field, you have some nerves. And Hopple had some nerves, but he controlled it. He is so strong right here holding off every challenge, getting through that finishing line, and setting him, himself up for a great spring season. I'm at the finish line here with Mr. Bryce Hopple. So first ever 600, first ever road race. What do you think? I mean, it's incredible. It's, a, it's an awesome event that Adidas put on out here. And it's just incredible to be able to engage with the community. And it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a new thing. And it was just incredible to be out here in Atlanta and do it. So what was the plan just coming in today? You just fresh off of an 800 win. Yeah, I mean, that was, the tough part was I didn't really have any plan. I mean, you just get out there, have fun, and run fast. And uh, I think we accomplished that today. So that end is a little tight when you're coming in. Were you nervous about how strategically to make your move? I was definitely a little nervous. I just kept telling my coach and everyone that asked, I was like, as long as I stay on my feet, I'm going to be happy with it. And so it was a little nerve wracking, but we came through and uh, went up the little ramp and gave everything we had. Definitely. Any shout outs that you would like to make? Uh, just shout out to my family and everyone back in Texas and Kansas. And thank you so much for all the support. Congratulations. Bryce Hopple, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, he uh, is clearly delighted with that. It's Bryce Hopple and uh, winning there by 0.3 of a second from Cameron Jones. 117.13 to 117.43. Rajay Hamilton getting Jamaica on the rostrum there in third place. Ryan Sanchez fourth on this occasion, but it's a long, long season stretching out in front of us, Carrie, for these uh, athletes that have been these road races today and the track races coming up, 16 track races ahead of us now. Sprints and uh, flat sprints and hurdle sprints as well. It's going to be uh, a fascinating afternoon. Some indicators of a form to come. Coming up, the uh, two heats of the women's 100 meter hurdles. The men's pole vault, by the way, also getting underway very shortly too. And we're bringing you the best of that action too from the high caliber fields, the fields in those 100 hurdles. Well, you'll see in a minute, they are superb. Running needs nothing. It likes fast times, slow times, but most of all, good times. Running needs nothing. It was born free, goalpost free, hoop free, finish line free. Running only takes two legs, sometimes not even. It doesn't care who gets there first, whether you're breaking records or setting a record for too many breaks. Running just needs you to show up and run as you are. Running needs nothing but you.
Edwin Moses. We are getting ready to watch everyone on the track now. Edwin, you're a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Like, you've done so much. You're such a legend in this sport. And you live right here in Atlanta. I live here in town. I'm really glad to see that they're trying to develop track and field here in the city. I think we're set up to have some really great competitions here, and I look forward to help making that happen. Would you have wanted to compete in an event like this? You know, when I was running, I was actually talking about these kind of venues and these kind of events, but it was well into the future for the sport of track and field. We were very innovative, so I'm glad to see the track and field is moving forward. You know, you're a big fan of it, of the sport. Are you proud of our sport? I am, I am. I think the young people today, are uh, they're marketing themselves in a very good way. Uh, the sport is developed. They have so many more things they can do. It doesn't take 15 trucks to bring out a TV crew, high-speed video, all the technical stuff. So I'm, I'm really pleased. What's been your favorite thing so far today? I mean, we've been seeing athletes from two years old all the way up to almost 100 years old. What's your favorite? I like the, uh, the mile that I just saw with I.J. Wilson, and I'm looking forward to the hurdles and the sprints. I want to see the hurdles. That's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. Well, we know you know how to run the hurdles. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you ever get out for runs? What's your workout like now? I don't work out that much, but I have some top secret video from me, myself being on the track running hurdles last week at the brand new track at Morehouse College. What? Top secret. It's I love secret. it. It's top secret. So I'm holding it until the right time. All right. All right. Well, Edmund Moses, everybody, thank you so much for being out here today. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Well, you can see here how the track has been constructed over the last few days. Shipped in from Boston, much of the uh, parts of the track. And it had to be rolled out and flattened and cleaned and nailed down when necessary where the joins are. And those joins have to be pretty much seamless, of course. You can't have athletes tripping over, world-class athletes tripping over. Massive uh, amount of work involved. I was talking earlier about how hard it was to get the pole vault runway uh, built up correctly. That men's pole vault, by the way, uh, has been underway for about half an hour. We'll be getting you up to date with that as and when we can. But uh, the main track itself is a huge construction project. Look at that. And it's got to be strong and safe and fit within the uh, stipulated regulations of what is uh, a specially constructed track for the times to be legal. The athletes uh, would be incredibly frustrated if uh, there were anything to go wrong the track were declared not legal but the times here over 100 150 the hurdles for men and women are going to be legit the road courses by the way were measured perfectly as well over the last couple of days i was talking to one of the measurers david katz yesterday and the uh dimensions of this five lane track just the five lanes but that's still <laughs> an awful lot of construction involved is spot on as well. There's a great shot of Centennial Olympic Park. And Carrie Tollefson is back on the track with uh, some other very important people. All right, you guys, I'm here with Spencer now with Adidas and Jay Holder with Atlanta Track Club. Spencer, we've been all over the world watching these amazing athletes that you have. How cool is it to be here in Atlanta? Oh, absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this setting. I can't wait for the lights to come on and just to look at you know, all the great lights and the venue and look at this crowd out here. Amazing. We, we've been fortunate enough, we've had this event over a couple of years and moved it to Atlanta and this is the first year and we can't wait to see what the second year is going to look like. Well, they are not only professional athletes, they become family for you guys at Adidas. Like, most of these athletes, I think there's only three athletes that aren't Adidas athletes here today. But really, what does it mean to you guys to support these athletes and help them, you know, have this career? Oh, I think you're right. I think they are part of our family. And if you look at the VIP section behind me, we've got some family, some athletes that have brought in 22 family members. And that's amazing. We love to see that. We love to meet them, love to spend time with them. And they feel part of the family as well. Well, Jay, you are behind a lot of this, all the media and all of this. It's been a busy weekend for you. Is it really coming to fruition now? Are you really excited about the day? This is the easy part, Carrie. The setup, the planning, the hoping people come. That's the hard part. Now everybody's here. They're having a great time. The races have been amazing. Now we can sit back and watch some awesome track and field action. You've had the Olympic trials here. I talked to Rich about that early at the top of the show. What is next for you guys? Because you keep having these world-class events, the trials, U.S. Nationals, this event. What's next? 
Well, what's next is the AJC Peachtree Road Race on July 4th. That's the biggest road race in the country, largest 10K in the world. So we're really focused on getting 60,000 runners out here on the streets of Atlanta to run a 10K. And then after that, who knows? You know Rich Kana. He's always got an idea. Uh, and, and I'm always uh, waiting to see what's next. I want to know if there is a secret race after the fireworks tonight between the two of you. <laughs> It would only be one winner, so oh, Spencer, no. Oh, I see. You're pointing at yourself. You've got to let the sponsor win, right? I mean, no, no. Over 40, I think I'd have a chance. Anything longer, I'm done. I love the partnership you guys have, and with Global Athletics and Marketing. So thank you, every for everything. me feel happy. I feel more energetic when I run in the morning. It gives me energy and to start your day in a good way. What's your sort of earliest memory of running? I did run a lot when I was young. I used to wake up and pray and then run at five in the morning. I think Paris is a person to keep in her mind, never give up. She's very disciplined and she also has the talent. She's also a role model to uh, young upcoming athletes. and I love running. When I put my running bike on, it empowers me. I break barriers every day. Running makes me feel strong and I'm stronger with every kilometer.
Well, welcome back to these uh, 2023 Adidas Atlanta City Games. Centennial Olympic Park is the uh, stage or the backdrop for this uh, world-class racing. You can see the barriers are out there for the uh, women's 100-meter hurdles just a few minutes away. But the uh, foot speed powered by Mondo races for kids today. How quick are these kids, Carrie? How quick are they? Oh, they're so quick. I am watching every little move. You can see the determination and the grit that they all have. They are really racing themselves here. The kids running individually measured by Mondo Technology, a speed gun over that very short section. And the top three boys and girls advance to the track. And the fastest boy and fastest girl get a trophy each. Oh, and you know that is a big deal, getting a trophy. Look at that, all smiles down there. They're dancing, they're bopping around, and then they go and sprint almost as fast as our professionals do. Look at them go. You've got to make your top speed between those two markers. I think she was tying up halfway in between that young lady. <laughs> well, listen, they go back and they do it three times, as you said. They just go back and forth and back and forth. They're going to be tired tonight. She needed a longer run-up. <laughs> She's still going somewhere across town. Well, they better get some good ice cream There's and some have speed. some fun. That's good Look speed. at that. Look at that leg speed. Great turnover. And look at how excited they are. Definitely the future is bright for all of those young athletes that were out there today. Always tough running on your own though, isn't it? Oh. And being trialed like that. It's, it's the competitive instinct. I'm not for the competitive instinct of being alongside somebody in front of them. But I could hear them, you know, he, they, they were yelling out their times and the athletes would just get so excited when they would set a new personal best or a new fastest day or fastest run of the day. It was really cool. Well, the 100 meter hurdles, two heats for the uh, elite women coming up. The talent is just oozing out of these two races. Tia Jones, world number two at the moment. Kenny Harris, and they both go in the first heat. The uh, second heat, well, again, Ebony Morrison in there. And uh, Anna Hall, the heptathlete, will be striding out over the barriers in the second heat. First two go through from each heat. Well, as if to announce the uh, start of the fast racing on the track. We saw just briefly there during the uh, national anthem, Kenny Harrison, the 30-year-old former world record holder, who goes in this first heat of the women's 100-meter hurdles, the second quickest athlete in history, setting a world record in London back in 2016, 12.20. Uh, broken by uh, Toby Amazon, the 12-12 in the semifinals at the World Championships last year in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, Toby Amazon, by the way, was due to run in the second heat, but just this morning, pulled out. I'm not sure, I, I believe it was right before midnight last night, and uh, she said that maybe she wasn't feeling well or maybe something came up, but we don't know exact reasoning why, but everyone was so excited to hear her, see her, excuse me, race, and get out there and, and really have a good push for Kenny Harrison. Well, it doesn't make it a necessarily much easier task for Kenny Harrison because Tia Jones in wonderful form. She and uh, Harrison are the two strong favorites to progress from this first heat. Tia Jones, well, last year she had a big indoor season and then 22 races outdoors. She has had no indoor races this year at all. Just two races so far outdoors. 12.66 here in Atlanta. 
a couple of weeks ago and then uh, won the Drake Relays in 12.44, so she's in very fine form indeed as Tia Jones. Kenny Harrison, well, this is her first outdoor race of 2023. She ran a flat 100 just last Saturday in 11.27 in Fresno, California, but uh, hasn't yet raced in anger over the barriers. Let's take a look at the uh, full field of this first heat. Five athletes go here. Jade Barber goes in lane one. 12.72 athletes. Semi-finals at the US Championships last year. Yvonne Britton in two. 12.78 for her, a lifetime best. Anything under 13 seconds is useful. Anything under 12.80 is world class. Tia Jones, what well, as I said, won the Drake Relays last week in 12.44. She's world number two this year. Kenny Harrison right up alongside her there in lane four. Only two races indoors, uh, this winner, but she was ninth at Middlerose. That wasn't a great run for her, the uh, former world record holder. Still the second fastest athlete in history, Kenny Harrison. And Crystal Morrison, the Jamaican, the 21-year-old, has a best of 12.69 from last year. ...tonight right here back on the track. So, in lane one from the United States, let's welcome Jade Barber, winner of the 2022 Cork City Sports International Meet with a personal best that she set in the hurdles at that time. In lane two, it's Yvonne Britton of the United States, sixth finisher in the 2022 U.S. Indoor Championships over the 60 hurdles. In lane three, it's Tia Jones, the 22-year-old from the United States. Yeah, give Tia a shout out. 2018 World Under 20 Junior Champion over the 100 hurdles. And in lane four, almost needs no introduction. This 30-year-old American is the American record holder over the 100-meter hurdles, the former world record holder, silver medalist in the 2019 World Championships. Please welcome Kenny Harrison. And then in lane five, here from Jamaica, fifth in the 2022 Jamaican Championships over the same distance, it's Crystal Morrison. Heat one of the women's 100-meter hurdles, Here's Tim and Carrie. We're clear. Oh, he's here. He might get with in lane four. Called her world record back in London 2016. What a run that was. I never thought it would get pulverized uh, in the fashion it did by Toby Amazan, the Nigerian, last year in Eugene, Oregon. But what sort of form is Kenny Harrison in? This is a very, very severe test for the former record holder. Tia Jones right beside her. Just 22 in lane three in a very fine form. 12.44 in the Drake relays just last week. So that lineup, Jade Barber in lane one, Yvonne Britton in two, Tia Jones right in the center in three. Watch her. Kenny Harrison second to left in four, and Crystal Morrison goes in lane five. The first two go through to the final by right. Great start there from Kenny Harrison. Maybe just second to left gets her uh, nose in front. Tia Jones coming back in the low. Tia Jones beginning to pull up alongside her. And is she going to get there or not? No, it's Kenny Harrison that takes it. 12.43. Wow. Kenny Harrison gets her season underway in spectacular style over the barriers. And if that is confirmed, that is a super, super way to start your hurdle campaign towards making the U.S. team for those world championships in Budapest, Kerry. Yeah, and Tia Jones really kept the pressure on. She is one of the youngsters in this field right here. But look at this start. Kenny Harrison looking great over the first five hurdles. But then here comes Tia Jones, and she's right up on her shoulder. And you can see that Kenny Harrison felt that pressure and really just used that strength and that maturity that she has to lean in and get to that final. Well, 12.44 the time has been confirmed at. That's the equal second fastest time in the world this year. Masai Russell of the USA running 12.36 in Austin, Texas, back on the 1st of April. I am on the finish line with Miss Tia Jones. Now, Tia, you're the youngest in this field in, in many races that you compete in. So there's a lot of kids in these crowds. So what helps you be confident in these races? Trusting your training, that's all you can do. What you do at practice is gonna show what you do on the track. So my age doesn't have anything to do with the field, it's my performance, period. Now, we in your hometown. You went to high school, you went pro out of high school right here in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's only right that you finish this for me. It's a parade. It's on my city, yeah. 
Congratulations, see ya. Thank you. I love it. Well, they'll get a chance to rematch in a little while. The uh, women's 100 hurdles final is at five past nine local time in exactly two hours. So they will go away and keep loose, keep warm, and prep mentally and physically for that 100-meter uh, hurdles final. The, the uh, five-lane track means that one athlete from these two heats will go through as a non-automatic qualifier. Jade Barber, their third in 13-12, will be watching carefully the third placer in this next heat. But Kenny Harrison, 12.44 from Tia John, 12.46, really tight there, Carrie. I mean, that's almost the thickness of a vest. I think that's what we thought. We were gonna see a real tight race, but you know what? Now Ken, Kenny has her one race under her belt. All the, everyone else in that field had a race under their belt for the outdoor season. Now Kenny has one. Well, the athlete's preparing for heat two. There is Anna Hall. She goes in lane three in this uh, second heat. She is a heptathlete, world championship bronze medalist from last year in the seven event heptathlon in uh, stadium track and field. Huge talent for Plur, prefers flat running to the barriers, she said to me yesterday, but she is a massively talented athlete. She's uh, gonna go to Gotzis in Austria uh, in a few weeks time for the big multi-event meeting there. And then she planned some 400 meter hurdles races yeah. on the Diamond League circuit. And, and listen to this, she has run 54-4 for 400 meter hurdles. Uh, she and is. probably about her 10th most important event. She is a phenomenal athlete. I think we're gonna watch her for many years to come. But you know, if you guys don't know Anna Hall, you need to look at her TikTok, you need to look at her social media. She's got great posts, but she also has great messages behind those posts. Like she is a true role model. She's really excited about the sport. She was a great multi-sport athlete not only just a multi-eventer on the track, but her family is here. She's had her sister here. I think her mom's here. She's really excited. She's going to be come. Uh, she's going to be competing in a couple events today. So we're going to see her more than once. Talking to her yesterday, she said she's technically raw in most events. She said, but she said in particular her throws she needs to work on. She knows she's got a lot of work to do. The big question for Anna Hall here with a PR of 13:09, which was in. But on Rouge just last Saturday is whether or not she can go under 13 seconds. That would be a, a lovely breakthrough for her. Good conditions. It is breezy, but I think the wind is coming from behind the athletes in the main. The wind behind the uh, athletes in that first heat, actually one meter per second. So they are getting a little bit of help. Is that Dwight Phillips there in the Yes. Car? He lives here. He trains here with his athletes. He's a coach now. Was but he yeah. three times world champion, I think, Dwight? <laughs> In I the mean, long jump. his name was at the top of the results every single time he competed. There's the lineup. Amber Hughes, Danielle Williams. Watch the Jamaican Anna Hall and Ebony Morrison. Danielle Williams, special athlete, the 30-year-old Jamaican. She was world champion back in 2015 in uh, Beijing, China. Second and sixth in the last two Commonwealth Games. She's super consistent as Danielle Williams. And that 12:32 makes her one of the quickest athletes in history. She starts here as a sp pretty strong favourite, as those times indicate. In lane one from the United States, the 28 year old Amber Hughes, third in the 2023 U.S. Indoor Championships over 60 hurdles. In lane two from Jamaica, let's welcome Danielle Williams, 2015 world champion over 100 meter hurdles. Uh, are you all still here? Let's hear some cheers for these folks, huh? There we go. In lane three, Wow, what an athlete. The 22-year-old American has the bronze medalist in the 2022 World Indoor Championships in the heptathlon. She is on the way to doing something spectacular in that event. Anna Hall. And in lane four, from Liberia, the silver medalist in the 2022 African Championships. Let's welcome Ebony Morrison. Tim, Gary, it's all yours. Thank you, Lewis. So, athletes in lanes one, two, four, and five. They haven't tightened up that uh, middle lane that was uh, due to contain Toby Amuzan, the world record holder, who pulled out, as Kerry said, very late last night. I only heard this morning. That remains uh, open. Daniel Williams, though, second to right of Jamaica. Very, very consistent. Holds the Jamaican national record. Hughes in one, Williams in two, Anna Hall in four, Ebony Morrison to the left in five. 
they get underway. Now, a really good start there from Ebony Morrison, the Liberian. Left her picture, does she lead at the moment? Beginning to get into a running now is Danielle Williams with a headband. Also great running from Amber Hughes on the far side. Amber Hughes is going to take this one, and she does on the dip there. A dive there from Danielle Williams. She crashes to the grey surface beyond the finish line. Let's hope she's okay, but uh, Amber Hughes over in lane one, the 28-year-old American, third in the US Indoor Championships, back in the middle of February, takes the win there and progresses through to the final. You can see Anna Hall getting excited there. Looks like a new PB for her, getting under 13 seconds there in 12.9. That's what we were hoping, is that uh, Anna Hall would break the 13-second barrier for the first time and battling their competitive instincts, taking her through to sub-13 territory. That's a nice breakthrough. Everybody out of the blocks, really nice here. Watching these athletes just drive. This track is so smooth, it looks so great, and it's right down the middle of a park, everybody. And look at this lean by all four of them right there at the line, very tight race. Amber Hughes on the near side there, taking the win, 12.83. Only uh, less than a tenth of a second outside her personal best from four years ago. So uh, that is a huge improvement on her season's best. Hi, I'm the finish line with my girl, Bam. Bam, amazing race. Now, you live here in Atlanta. You woke up out of your bed and came to the track. That had to feel great. Yes, it was great to just wake up. It just felt like I was coming to practice, like just a normal routine. And just locked in. So any shout outs you want to make here in Atlanta? Yes, I want to say hi to my family for coming. Where you at? Hey! <laughs> well, we'll see you in the next, the round, next round, Bam. Thank you so much. I love that. She says she locked in. You know when an athlete locks in, that means they're about to do some damage. She looked good. That is a huge performance from Anna Hall. 12.90, her first time ever under 13 seconds. Actually sneaked into a second place there, I think, uh, in that heat, just uh, beating Williams, who was on 12.92. Or was she third? She was third, excuse me. You know, Anna, Anna Hall just is having fun, and you can see that. We talked to her yesterday. She's excited about what she's doing. She's surprising herself. She feels so strong, and she's just really happy in her environment, and I think that's really important, to be happy where you're at, and to be excited about the future. You know, she had this great indoors where she's just off the world record. She set the American record, and now she wants that, what is it, 7,000 plus is what she's hoping for. She wants to crack that barrier outdoors for the heptathlon. Well, there's the result. Kenny Harrison, the quickest of them all, 12.44. Tia Jones, 12.46 in that first heat. And uh, Amber Hughes, winner of that second heat, 12.83 qualifies. The, uh, the hall goes through with 12.90. There is Sam Kendricks. Twice world champion in the men's pole vault. Kendricks uh, winning the world title in 2017 in London and then in 2019 in Doha, Casa. An Olympic bronze medalist in Rio back in 2016. He's uh, uber consistent, this Sam. He is, and he has his ups and downs, you know, but he keeps coming back. And when he's ready to compete, we know that he is ready. He does not come to competitions without being really ready and confident. And if anything, the strength of this six-man field in the pole vault is even better than in the women's. An exclusively U.S. field, which underlines the strength of U.S. vaulting. And every one of these guys is world-class. Sam Kendricks, a serial medalist and high placer, holds the uh, North American record with six meters and six centimeters. That's 19 feet, 10 and a half. That was in Des Moines at the National Championships back in 2019. You saw that one, and it was a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. He was mobbed by the other competitors when he went yeah. over when he went over 606. It was a truly special moment. Well, and Sam Kendricks is now a new dad as well, so we're giving the props and the you know congratulations to all these new parents, and it's really fun to see that. So, Luke Winder will go, the 27-year-old, second U.S. Uh, championships last year. And that's Winder going clear at uh, 17 feet 5, 5 meters 31. A nice early sighting vault there for Luke Winder. 
Williams uh, went out and qualifying the World Championships last year, having made the team with that silver medal at the US Championships. Well, look at it go, Tim. This has been a really beautiful day for competition. The wind is pretty low. The athletes love the temperatures. Yesterday was a little bit of a different day. Today is perfect. He's in really good form too, you know, set a personal best of 580, 19 feet and a quarter inch in uh, Chula Vista, California, back on the 30th of April. So, uh, very recent great form from Luke Windley. You need that, gives you great confidence. 531 then as well for Matt Ludwig. US Indoor Champion back in 2020. Yeah, no problem at all. I think a lot of these fellas, perhaps because of the new runway, the new facility, just uh, wanting to get a, an early vault in to get a feel for it. That was uh, very straightforward for Ludwig. He too is a 590 vault and 19 feet four and a quarter in PR. That was uh, three years ago down in Mexico. Big fella, isn't he? Very, very powerful. You have to be for this discipline, although ironically the world record by Mondo Duplantis, who is uh, a Swedish American, Brought up here in the USA, mm -hmm. schooled here in the USA, but uh, Swedish heritage, and he chooses to compete for Sweden. He's uh, one of the smallest vaulters around. Clayton Fritsch, next to go then, 24-year-old. Second in the NCAA Championships last year. And again, they're all popping over 531 here, 17-5. And frankly, athletes of this caliber shouldn't be struggling at this height. He is a 582 Volta, that's 19-1 Fritsch. But it always uh, amazes me how often these fellas compete, carry the, the Volta's and in particular, because they need to polish their skills. It's such a demanding talent, such a demanding discipline, excuse me, that you look at their, their season sometimes at the end of the season and they've vaulted 25 30 times right. in different tournaments all over the place you know well. have poles will vault but uh, the irony of that is that to get from one venue to another taking those poles with you Hard. on and off planes and everything is such a hassle yeah yeah and you hear horrific stories of airlines snapping poles driving vehicles right. over them even sawing them in half <laughs> well we hope that that doesn't happen to these athletes, but you know, they're used to almost taking care of these poles like they would their own children. I mean, they are really attached to them and you have to be every little inch or centimeter obviously counts. And so the technique is so critical in this event. Austin Miller next to go. Jacob Wooden, by the way, is passing at the site. He's choosing to not go for it. Wooden, who was the silver medalist at the US Indoor Championships in Albuquerque just a few weeks ago. Back in the middle of February. His lifetime best, 590. That's a 19 four and a quarter. That was uh, a couple of years ago, in fact, three years ago now. But Wooden, the only one so far to have uh, decided not to go at this height, 17 5, 531. Sam Kendricks last in the jumping order. There is no indication on our computer that Kendricks will pass at this height. He might too. Just have a little uh, sighting vault, I guess. What I love about Sam Kendricks is he's always there chatting with his competitors and he's lifting people up. He's a very positive guy and he's just standing there right there getting ready for his own attempt, but he's also encouraging all his competitors on as well. Ooh, that one looked good. Yeah, nice from Austin Miller. And I'll tell you what's wonderful for this crowd too gathered here in Centennial Olympic Park is how close up and uh, personal you can get with these vaulters. Yeah. They're right up close and you get a really good idea of just how high they are going. The perspective is, is brilliant when you can be standing right alongside the pit. He was way over there, he looked sharp. Now some people would call that an extravagant vault. A lot of energy goes into each of these vaults and uh, once you're getting deep into a big competition, there won't be so many vaults here because there's not so many competitors, but then uh, they do have to be con conserve their energy. There is the uh, lineup for the first of the men's 110 meter hurdles heats. And what a lineup this one is. Grant Holloway is a world champion from Eugene last year when he retained his title. I'll take you down to Lewis Johnson.
seven silver medalists from the world championships from last year. It's got to come through these heats first. So here we go with heat one. We've got five athletes and in lane one from the United States, the 2022 NCAA Division II champion, Lewis Rollins. Come on now, let's let these athletes hear you. There we go. In lane two, 28-year-old American, 2023 U.S. Indoor champion over 60 hurdles, it's Freddie Crittenden. In lane three, a two-time world champion from 2019 and 2022, silver medalist at the 2022-21 Olympic Games. From the United States, it's American Grant Holloway. And next to him in lane four, from Jamaica, the 23-year-old 2021 NCAA Indoor Champion over 60 hurdles, it's Damian Thomas. And rounding out this first heat from the United States, 2018 and 19 MEAC Champion over the hurdles, Michael Dixon. Heat one, the top two will automatically qualify to the final, and the next fastest time will be added. Here we go, Tim Carey. So Grant Holloway then goes in the central lane, lane three of these five. He's a superb athlete, really wonderful specimen. The world record holder of his 60 meter hurdles indoors, 7.29 he produced in Madrid a couple of years back. He is the reigning world indoor champion from uh, Belgrade in Serbia last year and the Olympic silver medalist from Tokyo 2021. Eight times an NCAA champion. He's gone through the gears of a college career and he is very much the finished product is Grant Holloway. Let's see how he goes here. Second fastest athlete in history. Wonderful view there. The crowds gathered around the finish line on this uh, blue track, beautiful blue track here in Centennial Olympic Park. The first of two heats of the men's 110 meter hurdles. Good start there from Holloway in the center in white. He's moving away already. He's got a meter lead after about two barriers. Holloway looking very, very smooth at the moment. Getting daylight between himself and the rest. Going well is Freddie Crittenden over on the far side. But Holloway winning by meter and a half. 13-16 with a very slight following wind. That is a lovely, lovely way to get uh, proceedings underway here in Centennial Olympic Park and the men's high hurdles. Those barriers are high too. Well, he looks smooth the whole way, and he was having fun with those photographers back there. He knows them. He wants to be the first one to see them, and he had a great race, Grant Holloway did. So strong, so technically savvy. You could see that after each hurdle, just one, two, three, boom, one, two, three, boom. Watch this. I love it, watching that drive, that determination. Look at those eyes. He can see the finish line. So powerful. Good running from Crit Freddie Crittenden, too, in uh, second place. 13.37 for him to qualify by right. Grant Holloway, 13.15. Right, so I got two good guys with me at the finish line. Got Mr. Grant Holloway, Mr. Damian Thomas. So, Grant, you got a lot of love in the audience over here. How you feel about that? Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, first round was always uh, just to get the gyms out, get a feel for the track, so I'm looking forward for the final. What you looking forward to in the final? You got anything in the tank for us? No, not, nothing really crazy. Just come out here and get to the finish line before some of these great competitors. Well, we definitely looking forward to seeing you in the final. Mr. Damien, how you feeling about your race? It wasn't probably what you wanted, but still some good hurdling. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the season best. Okay. So it's a step in the right direction, so we move forward. So what's your favorite part about being a hurdler? Honestly, probably the workouts. How short they are, I don't do nothing past 150, so I'm good with that. <laughs> I feel you on that. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you in the final two. Thank you. Well, Damien Thomas there saying he's uh, quite happy with his uh, run. 13.60, season's best, as he said. He's a 13.11. I heard luck, but that improves his 13.72 from uh, a recent race 
1360 for him. He finishes fifth in that race, will play no part in the final. There's confirmation of the uh, automatic qualifiers. Holloway 1315. That is quick with that slight following wind. Freddie Crittenden 1337. And Louis Rollins, well, 1358. You'll have to see if he goes through with that one. That's uh, a big season best for him, too. Not far off his lifetime best Rollins there in third place. So Sam Kendricks then takes his opening vault at 531, 17 feet five. And he too, of course, twice world champion, pops over that without any trouble at all. Kendricks, remember, has been, uh, well, about two and a half feet higher than that with his 19, 10 and a half personal best, 606 US record holder. So. Everybody that attempted it carrying went over first time 531, as you would expect, because this is a high caliber field. I mean, there's a lot of meat promoters in Europe would pay a lot of money to get a feel of this caliber together. Yeah, well, you know, he's a 10 time national champion, Sam Kendricks. He also had some injuries this past year in 2022, so he's come back and he keeps coming back and he showed today in that jump right there. He's ready. He's going to he's going to have a big one, I think, today. So. Miller next to go. Austin Miller. Can tell you that Matt Ludwig has cleared this next height, 5 meters 46, that's 17.11. Matt Ludwig cleared it first time, so did Jacob Wooden, but Clayton Fritsch uh, failed his first attempt at this height. Austin Miller going at it now. 5.46, and he too puts it down. Luke Winder as well failed at this height, so this one just causing one or two challenges to these fellas. Ludwig and Wooden both clear it first time. Wooden, remember, it was his opening height. He didn't come in uh, at the early height. He was the only athlete to not come in at 17.5, 5, five metres 31. Yeah, just getting that bar with his quads there, really kind of smashing into it, not happy with that attempt. So Sam Kendricks should be next to go, and he is there. Yeah, just negotiating a bit of space on that uh, that runway. So in 2022, Sam Kendricks, his season was cut short by a torn meniscus. He had to have surgery on May 2nd of last year, so he's been about a, he's a year out from that, but coming back and has looked good since indoors. He really has come around. He's had a tough couple of years, though. Yeah, he has. Did you remember in, in, mm -hmm. in Tokyo, the Olympic Games the previous year in 2021, he got COVID and yeah. had to stay in his room. And he didn't have, like two weeks, he he had didn't to stay have any room. symptoms, but he couldn't be out there. It was really frustrating for him and for everyone. You know, we were all hoping to see him do some great, great things at the Olympics. Yeah. It seems like a different world now. You can yeah. you get your heart back to those times. Here he goes at 5 minutes 46, 17 11. Sam Kendricks is second vault of the day. As you would expect from uh, such a great footballer, makes it look easy. He's one of those athletes who's constantly buoyant. Sam, he's a wonderfully happy, bubbly personality. He's talking all the time, except when he's on the runway. Hold on, that's rich. <laughs> I know I like to talk too. And there is the lineup for the second heat of the men's uh, 100 meter hurdles, 110 meter hurdles, I should say. Robert Dunning, local fella, he goes in uh, lane two. Trey Cunningham, watch him. Silver medalist from the World Championships last year, Trey Cunningham, Jamal Britt, and Eric Edwards. And he too standing behind their blocks. So here we go. In lane two from the United States, 2021 NCAA champion, Robert Dunning. In lane three, the 24 year old has been right there with Grant Holloway, who we saw in heat one. He's the silver medalist in the 2022 World Outdoor Championships. It's Trey Cunningham. In lane four from the United States, 24-year-old 2021 Big Ten champion over the 400 hurdles is Jamal Britt. 
And in lane five on the outside, second in the 2022 NCAA championships over the 110 hurdles, it's Eric Edwards Jr. So the top two will automatically qualify to the final and one fastest time behind them. Here we go with heat two of the men's 110 hurdles right here in Centennial Olympic Park. Here we go for the call. Heat two then. Which of these uh, athletes will join Holloway and Crittenden, the first and second places in heat one? Third in that first heat, by the way, was uh, Rollins. Louis Rollins with 13.58. But only one third placer from these two heats will make it through. Trey Cunningham, NCAA champion last year and silver medalist at those world championships. Fabulous season he had. He goes in lane two. In lane three, rather. Third, third from right, second from right. Dunning to the right in two. Cunningham in three. Jamal Britt in four. Eric Edwards in five. Well, they reset him, but reset them. But Ro Robert Dunning on the inside there, walking back with the green kit. He, has, he said he had maybe 30, 50 family members planning to come here today. Yeah, Dunning, talking to him yesterday, he said he has no PRs on the flat. He's run 49.70 for 400 hurdles. He's super talented, is Dunning. He goes to right a picture there. Beside him, Trey Cunningham, second to right. He goes in three. Jamal Britt, second to left in four. And Eric Edwards on the left in five. Good start there from Jamal Britt, second to left. Now beginning to come through is Trey Cunningham. Craig, Trey Cunningham, second to right, looking very smooth. Match tried for stride by Jamal Britt. It's going to be tight, this one, but uh, Trey Cunningham there, a little bit of stumble. About a meter out, about a, a barrier out, I should say. And I think Jamal Britt takes that one. Cunningham, very, very tight for second place with Robert Dunning on the far side. Well... Jamal Britt does take it 13.28. Trey Cunningham takes uh, second at 13.32. And Dunning, third, 13.34. Does make it through. So Rob Dunning, based in Gainesville, Florida, does make it through. And carry. That was very, very competitive. Not the smoothest of races by Cunningham. No, Cunningham looked a little bit like he had a couple little steps that weren't quite right underneath him, so he had to figure that out. As you can see right here, just a little bit of unease there, but he battled it out, he gritted it out, and he's going to be on to that final where you know he'll clean it up. Talking to the uh, first two in that second heat. Let's have a look at the result. Jamal Britt, 1328, season's best for uh, Jamal Britt there. He's a 1308 athlete. Trey Cunningham taking second place. And Robert Dunning with that 1334 becomes the uh, non automatic qualifier for the final. All right, I got two good guys, hurdlers down here with me Trey Cunningham, Robert Dunning, Trey. You coming off a long season last year. I know you're happy not to have as many races. First year pro, what are you most looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to making a name for myself out there on the circuit. I mean, I've described it to people as like, I feel like a freshman again. Yeah. Gotta prove myself, get my name out there, and have fun while I'm doing it. So what's one goal you have off the track? Off the track? Well, I just finished my master's program, so relax, uh, <laughs> read a book, yeah. go to the beach. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. I feel you, I feel you. So Robert, eight years since you ran in your hometown, Atlanta, does it feel the same? Oh no, it's definitely different. <laughs> As a pro, I feel like, you know, I see my family over there on the side. I don't know if they see me. I see your uncle over there. Hey fam! <laughs> it's all happy they out here, you feel me? They haven't seen me run since high school, so all I'm gonna do is be blessed. So nice, easy race today. Is that what you expected? 
Oh, y'all was waiting on that track. Bounty, I was not used to that. <laughs> but I, I just saw the time, so I qualified, so we're gonna make the adjustment in the final. All right, we'll see both of you guys in the final. You will indeed see both those guys in the final. Britt, the winner, though, in his season's best, 13.28 there from Cunningham. Dunning, 13.34, qualifies as well. That final, by the way, is at 9.15 local time. So those fellas have got a one hour and 40 minutes to prepare for the final. And those first uh, five names with the green cues beside their names are the qualifiers for the final. Holloway, 13.15. Well, frankly, a class apart so far in the heats. Jamal Britt, 13.28. Cunningham, Dunning and Crittenden are the five finalists. Well, I suspect that the sprint hurdlers and the sprinters to come that make it through the finals will go better in their uh, following races in the finals. Ooh, here is Anna Hall doing her fashion walk. And you can see all the athletes, they put on all their best kicks, their gear, and they show everybody how they can look off the track. And I'm telling you, all of them are looking good. That's Gabby Thomas right there. How come we didn't do that? I, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> There's a subtle difference. They're young, healthy, successful. So next event on the track, the uh, men's 100 meters, two heats to come, two trials to come. First race will get underway in about three minutes' time. Again, they are packed with uh, high caliber performers, these 100 meter races. Let me just update you on that pole vault, by the way. And uh, Matt Ludwig, who cleared 531 first time, 546 first time, 561 now, 18 feet, four and three quarters. Oh, just clips that one, his first failure of the day. I can tell you that all six competitors eventually went over the previous height, 17 and 11, that's 5 meters 46. Only Jacob Wooden has gone clear so far at this height, 561, 18, 4 and 3 quarters. Both uh, Ludwig there and Luke Winder, a couple of minutes ago, have failed their first efforts at that height. Clayton Fritch next to go. Well, Clayton Fitch opened up his season with the 565, so he definitely is looking to get a better remark, better mark here now, then head home and get back to work. You know, that's what it's all about, kind of getting these first early season meets underway and going back, tweaking things, figuring out what they need to do, where they need to go. Is that in the weight room? Is it, you know, working on the runway? What is it? But you get so much information back from all of these meets. So the athletes just about ready for the first heat of the men's 100 meters. First of two heats, I should say. And there is the lineup, and I'll throw you down to uh, Lewis. Okay, sprinters are on the track. It's now time for more speed here at the Atlanta City Games. The men's 100 meters, the elite men's. This is heat one. And of course, the top two and the third fastest time will be in the final later at 8.55 p.m. tonight. Here we go with Heat 1. In lane 1, it's Terrence Lair, 2021 NCAA champion, over 100 meters. Let's welcome Terrence. There we go. In Heat 2, the, he was fifth at the 2021 Olympic Games, Ronnie Baker. Good to see Ronnie back. In lane 3, you know we got to mix it up with some Jamaican flavor here tonight, huh? Fourth in the 2022 World Championships, it's Oblique Seville. In lane four, you know his last name, but he's got his own identity and own drive to be the greatest. He is fifth in the 2022 U.S. Championships, over 200 meters. Josephus Lyles is here. And in lane five, 2019 champs in Jamaica, he was second. From Jamaica, Ryan Ford. He won Tim and Kerry. 
Thank you, Lewis. Yes, five athletes here. Ronnie Baker, who's had a difficult time of it. No outdoor season last year. He got sick in the indoor season at the beginning of 2022 and then got hurt in the spring. And uh, 2022 was a complete write-off for the Olympic Games fifth placer. He goes in lane two. Terence Laird goes in lane one. Ronnie Baker in two. Oblique Seville. 986, the personal best of the Jamaican. He's only 22. He's right in the center. Josephus Lyle, second to left in four. Ryan Ford in five to the left of picture. Good start there from Bleak Seville. Keeps really low for the first six or eight strides. Smaller man though, Ronnie Baker coming through on the far side. But it's a Bleak Seville who's going to take this one very impressively indeed. Wow. 10 0 2 in almost still air by a Bleak Seville. Second in the Jamaican Championships last year. That's no mean feat. And we knew he was in good form. He's world number three this year with 9.95 from 8th of uh, April. That was in Miramar, Florida. Well, he's fourth last year at the World Championships in Eugene in 2022. And you know that's been fueling him. Watch him get off the line here. And he's right in the middle of the screen. He's really driving hard. Great drive phase there. Standing up just a little bit through this first round. Well, you know that fourth place from last year is really driving him for, the, for this summer in Budapest, Hungary. Well, it wasn't only fourth in the individual 100 meters last year in Eugene. It was fourth in the 4 by 100 relay as well. Yep. It was a tough championship. Terrence Laird at the finish line with me. Terrence, the track community has been looking for you. You are back. How does it feel? Uh, great. I'm healthy. I, I definitely I got third in the heat, so I feel great. I'm just ready to keep running and keep, uh, keep, keep going, pushing, and getting ready for USA's. So what, what, is, what are you looking for this outdoor season? Um, just getting better every day, taking it day by day, week by week, meet by meet, and just build on and uh, go to USA's with the best version of myself to compete for the Budapest team. Most definitely. Well, we'll see you back at the final, okay? Well, Seville winning there pretty impressively in 10 0 3. But uh, Ford, Ryan Ford of Jamaica, the 21 year old, running a personal Ooh. best 10 12. That's some improvement from 10 18. Wow. And Laird 10 16. He may well go through to the final with that one from third place. We'll have to wait and see. The second heat coming up. Ronnie Baker 10 17, battling back to uh, full fitness clearly. And Josephus Lyles there in 10 27 with fifth place. Well, I don't care what age you are, where you are. When you see PB next to your name, you need to celebrate. That doesn't happen very often. So Ford better be excited about his, his race right there. Coming up, the second heat. So the athletes on track for the uh, second heat. Carry conditions just about Ooh. perfect. I know these fellas and these gals would like a little bit more of a tailwind, but you cannot complain about this. Oh, I don't think they are complaining. It is absolutely gorgeous. The sun is starting to go down now, and it's starting to get that little bit. It's warm, but there's that little chill in the air. It's like perfect running conditions. What do you reckon the temperature is just sitting here by the finish line? I'd say like 72. Wow. Did you just... Do you know I wanted to be a meteorologist? Did I just you nail that? Like Is it 72? Yeah, that, that's a really sought after job in the UK. <laughs> anyway. If you live in Minnesota, that is like one of the best jobs to have. You get a little weather there. <laughs> just a little. So these boys out on the track then for this uh, second heat. And uh, a little bit of British interest there. Zarnell Hughes goes second to right. The uh, six foot three former Anguilla changed from Anguilla to uh, British nationality back in 2015. European champion back in 2018 is a 9-9-1 performer, Zarnell Hughes. And 
this has a real international flavor to it this race with the south african akani simbina going in lane three and the bohemian steve gardner who's only world champion from 2019 and olympic champion from tokyo over 400 meters steve gardner in lane four A lot of eyes on Steve Gardner. You know, he's coming down in distance, so it's always fun to see what their top end speed is. We've seen him run the 400 meters, 200 meters, things like that, but really to see him drop down to 100 meters is always a treat. Sam Kendricks then back in the vault. He's had one failure at 5 meters 61 is Sam Kendricks, 18 four and three quarters. The second time, oh, and he gives that one quite a clip too. Now, two athletes went over first time, Jacob Wooden and Austin Miller. Jacob Wooden leads on count back. He hasn't had a failure yet. Austin Miller failed at his uh, second height, 17-11, 5.46, and then cleared his third height, 5.61, 18.4 three quarters at the uh, first time. But Luke Winder has gone clear as well. So three athletes clear at this height, Kerry. But uh, Sam Kendrick's in a little bit of trouble. Brought to you by Adidas. With Adidas, impossible is nothing. And here we go, everybody. Let's take our attention back to the track. Heat two of the men's 100 meters is ready to go. Five competitors, and this is going to be a tough one to be in the top two. In lane one, fourth at the 2022 Jamaican Championships, it's Jelani Walker of Jamaica. In lane two, he's a two-time European champion over 100 meters and 200 meters from Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It's Zarnell Hughes. Ah, oh, the international flavor continues here. From South Africa, he's the South African record holder over 100 meters. Please welcome Akini Sambine. Thank you, Akani. All righty. And this man, wow. 2021 Tokyo Olympic champion over 400 meters from the Bahamas. It's Steven Gardner. And rounding out the field in lane five from the United States, a 27 year old was a 2018 double SEC champion from the University of Georgia. How about them dogs? Kendall Williams. Here it is. He too. And the question is, is who is going to be able to finish in the top two in this heat? This is going to be tough. Tim, Gary? It is indeed. There is Steve Gardner. He's uh, not easy to miss. Six foot five is the Bahamian in lane four. He is a 400 meter specialist. His PR for uh, 200, 19.75. That is the national record for the Bahamas, but he goes in four. Let's look at the lineup from the far side. Jelani Walker goes in one. 10 seconds dead, his personal best from last year. Zarnell Hughes, six foot three. He is two, second to right. The uh, European champion back in 2018, over 100. Akali Simbino, the African record holder, 9.84 goes in three. Gardner in four. Kendall Williams, left of picture, in five. Very, very low, Simbine there, that's most compact on these sprinters. Easing away at the moment, going with his Zarnell Hughes, pull up as Jelani Walker, but look at this, it's very tight at the line there, and he eases up. Zarnell Hughes, though, I think, despite easing up, winning that one in 10.07, very marginally from Simbine. It was very tight at the line. Simbine, remember, fourth in those Tokyo Olympic Games over 100 meters, fourth in the 100 meters back in 2019 at the World Championships. He's kind of the nearly man, but he does have that African record from uh, 2021, 984, and I think just beaten there. We'll wait for that to be confirmed. Looking at the results, yes, Hughes, 10.07, Sabine, 10.09. They go through by right. And Kendall Williams, third with 10.21. Well, that means Laird will go through from the first heat. Terence Laird, then, will make it through to the final as the non-automatic qualifier from the two heats. One of the two, four, two finest in the building, straight out of the Bahamas. So you get to have a little fun and run down a little bit. So how did that feel for you? Oh, it feels good uh, to be back here and stepping down for once and, <laughs> you know, 
pretty fun day. Yeah. So how is your training going on, and when are you going to get you a good 400-meter race? Our training has been going good. You know, we all have ups and downs, but, you know, it doesn't stop anything. Mm -hmm. And we keep the show on the road. Right. Well, congratulations, and uh, we'll see you outdoors pretty, pretty soon. Ah, right, thank you. Yeah, very philosophical there, uh, Steve Gardner. He's a 400-meter specialist. He knows he's up against it here with these 100-meter uh, sprinters. There he is, second to left. Those long, long legs kept going for another half mile or so, I suspect. Past the finish line, he's a 400-meter guy. But uh, Zano Hughes and Sabine having a very, very tight battle there. 10 to 10 9 the Brit over the South African. And uh, Ford Laird, uh, sorry, Seville Ford and Laird go through from the first heat. We should be able to confirm that for you very shortly. But to the times, well, Seville, I believe Seville 10 3 by some margin the quickest. Darnell Hughes 10 7 Sabine under 10 1 as well. And a personal best there for Rian Ford taking uh, second place 10 12. That was some improvement from him 10 18, his previous best. Great day for him already. Laird making it through as the non-automatic qualifier, so three from the first heat. Ronnie Baker just missing out. And we can go back to this uh, pole vault now. And here is Sam Kendricks, third and final attempt at 18, four and three quarters, five meters, 61. Ooh, Booms yes. over that one. Looks good. Yeah. You see the frustration that he had on that last attempt. And he really goes back, and you can see the focus and drive that this man has. <laughs> then he has his fun, and he gets ready to go again. Look at him. He's a lovely technician, is Sam. This was a kind of last chance saloon stuff at a height that for him is fairly uh, simple normally. But it's early season, and 561, you can't, you can't just sort of take a glance at it and think, yeah, no problem at all. I just feel like Sam Kendricks is one of those athletes that when the pressure kind of gets on him, he elevates his game, and he likes that. You know, it almost is, I'm sure he didn't want to have a missed attempt, but he was like, okay, wake up a little bit. It's like the third quarter of the mile, right? Sometimes you need something to wake you up, and that woke him up, and he looked really good on that last attempt. Well, I can tell you that Matt Ludwig went over that uh, height as well, 18, four and three quarters, 561 at the third time of asking Clayton Fritch didn't know Clayton Fritch the first to leave the uh, leave the competition and Jacob Wood next to go at the next height 571 18 8 and three quarters we're getting to serious territory now for vaulting well I love that bring it on you can just see that you know before they're maybe talking a little bit more with the competitors or maybe seeing their coaches but now game face it's time yeah gloves come off so to speak yeah what a beautiful evening, though, it is. As we've talked about, we could not have asked for better weather. Last night, a little bit of gust here and there. It was rainy. It was cold. It was freezing. <laughs> we were here for like four hours last <laughs> night, and it was freezing. Jacob Wooden, though, first attempt, first to go at 571. Nope. Ooh, no. Nope. And he knew it. He knew it way up high that it was not a good jump for him. Frustrated here. This is well within his compass. He is a 590 Volta. I was uh, in February last year down in Mexico, 19, four and a quarter, his PR. And the, the vertical jumps, you know, they are so tough psychologically. They're the, they're the disciplines where you, you have to get on top, you have to believe you can do it. If you think about it, whether it's long jump, triple jump, the throws, there is no sort of absolute physical barrier that means you've failed so to speak, whereas in the vertical jumps, there absolutely is. It's, it's either good or it's bad. There's, no, there's nothing in between. Yeah, it's very, very hard technically to get these right. And just watching, look at that drive. And nope, that one wasn't for him either. No, wouldn't there uh, with that first failure. He's only had two vaults prior to this, so he's still fresh. These fellows have got many good vaults in them. Coming off uh, a winner of Lots of work in the gym, strength and conditioning work, and now just polishing up the technique. Luke Winder will be next to go. He's uh, he's had a more busy time, five volts already, clearing uh, his second and third heights at the second time of asking. Here he goes. Winder, World Championship representative for the USA last year in Eugene. No. This is going to sort him out a bit, you sense. But again, five meters 71, 18, eight and three quarters. 
this is uh, where he's been before, but it's not so far above his, uh, below his personal best of five meters, eight carry, 80 carry, 19 feet and a quarter is his PR. I mean, you're always thinking about that PR, and so you know that he's gonna go home here, go right now and regroup, figure out what he can do. Next event on the track, by the way, is the women's one. So the athletes out on the track at the far end there, well, almost the far end, they're 50 meters up from the far end because it's the women's at 100 meters, the first of two heats. Again, the first two go through by right to the final later on tonight with one non-automatic qualifier. Mario Ahura Demps goes in lane at two. The Ivory Coast athlete, 35 now, world indoor champion back in 2016, 2018 rather. She is super quick out of the blocks, Ahura. And as you can see on paper, the quickest there, but Aaliyah Hobbs in wonderful form. Coming up later tonight. Okay, heat one. In lane one, from the Côte d'Ivoire, it's Muriel Ahori Demps. Bonsoir, Madame. 2016 African champion. In lane two, I already heard you cheering for her from the United States. Silver medalist in the 2021 Olympic Games. Two-time U.S. champion, Aliyah Hobbs. More heat in lane four, 24-year-old American, the fifth in the 2023 U.S. Indoor Championships. Here is Solera Barnes. And in lane five, from the United States, 2021 double NCAA champion, over 100 and 200 meters, please welcome Cambria Sturgis. Heat one of two in the women's 100 meters. Well, there is Alea Hobbs, gold medalist in the 4x100 at the World Championships last year, having run in the heat, coached by uh, Dennis Shaver at LSU, NCAA champion back in 2018, 10.81. She ran last year, and that was in the semi-finals of the uh, US Championships. Every one of these athletes has gone a long way under 11 seconds. Salira Barnes, 10.94 last year sixth in those u.s championships so nearly made the relay squad and uh, cambria sturgis to left of picture ncaa champion in 2021 at 100 and 200. first heat of the women's 100. well powers out of the blocks does alia hobbs hobbs leading at the moment and pulling away she's powerful very very smooth indeed and easing up and winning by three meters and more 1092 there for Aaliyah Hobbs, wow. And she was shutting down she from about 10 minutes out. You know, one thing I love about her, she's a new mommy. So she is running for a different cause right now. Her baby boy's back home. But you know, she's had a hard last couple months. She won indoors and then she broke her hand. And look it, she hasn't been able to do the starts that she's wanted to do. She hasn't been able to get in the weight room like she's wanted to. But today she looks like she is back 100% and totally shutting it down with about five meters to go. Very exciting summer coming up if this is anything to go by from uh, Alea Hobbs. Second place there, Lucilla Rabant in 11.25. She qualifies by right. And down to UT. With Solera Barnes, my girl, come man, come on up and get this hair because it's giving what it's supposed to be giving. Yes, ma'am. So you just finished running this amazing race with this crowd so close to you. Just talk about that experience. It's an amazing experience to have everybody out here. Um, I see all, all my family, all my supporters, so I'm really, really happy to be here. Most definitely. We'll see you back here for the final, okay? Yes, thank you, guys. Yeah, good second place there for Solera Barnes. <laughs> Look at her doing her dance. Only just outside of season's best of 11:16, uh, which was down in Florida a couple of weeks back, Claremont. But, but uh, this is the one to talk about, Aaliyah wow. Hobbs. You know, she said she wasn't able to do the training that she's wanted to be able to do, but she's feeling better than ever, and that's scary. 
you know, I said to her, are you going to change things up then? Are you going to, you know, maybe not get in the weight room as much or work on your start so much? She was like, no, because guess what? Once I'm back to full tilt, it means even better things. And, you know, I love that attitude. I think she's got an incredible summer coming up. And you know what? I, 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 I mean, I've got a couple of kids, but they're kind of older than 10 months right yeah. now, like young Amir that, that, that Alir has had. But that kind of calms you down, I would imagine, as well. You know, you've got a training and everything, and it's actually a nice release from what's going on back home. Well, being, a, being a young mum is, is tough. Yeah, and, you know, she adopted You're always him. moaning about having I, kids. I love my babies, <laughs> and so does she. And you can see that extra pep that she has now. Well, we can go back to the uh, vault now. And uh, we, I said we're getting serious territory now. Just one athlete clear at 571, 18 feet, 8 and 3 quarters. The others have all had one attempt and failed. Mm. And that is uh, Jacob Wooden going clear at the second time of asking. 18, 8 and 3 quarters. And he pushes on. The next height will be 576. We're going up in 5 centimeter increments now. That's a couple of inches per the time. But Luke Winder, Sam Kendrick, and Matt Ludwig all failed this height first time. <laughs> Feedback straight away after the vault. That has changed so much, hasn't it? Do you remember you know, the days when it was illegal for coaches to talk to athletes? I do remember that, actually. Are you, are you, are you you're, you're that old? Yeah. But I love it. I thought you'd say, no, your, your smart answer would have been no. I don't, I don't, I don't like Twitter, actually. But I love watching that interaction with the coaches and their their athletes or the athletes and their teammates if a coach doesn't travel. I love seeing that interaction. Well, the reason they changed the rules was because it was becoming ridiculous. There was sort of sign language going on between yeah. athletes and notes being passed between coaches and athletes. And then, I don't know, what, about 20 years ago now, they just went, nah, just, just, just allow it. it. Yep. Coaches can chat to the athletes, talk to the athletes during comp. Luke Winder then, next to go. Second attempt for him. He's lying in third place. He's cleared the previous two heights at the second time of asking. So, the second time clearance here would be just great for Winder. Big fella, big bouncy, powerful stride. Oh, no. that was so close. So, so close. But not close enough. And Winder has one attempt left at that. Two men clear so far, remember. Austin Miller first time. And he holds the lead from Wooden, who cleared it second time of asking. Matt Ludwig next to go. Oh, just takes that off. Look at that. The center of gravity is over. We go to the track now for the second heat of the uh, women's 100 meters spectacular sprinting from Alea Hobbs in the first. It needs nothing. It likes fast times, slow times, but most of all, good times. So the second heat of the women's 100 meters coming up. There it is, Gina Luckenkemper of Germany goes in lane three. She is the uh, European champion from last summer. Ashanti Moore in two, Mikia Briscoe in four, and Crystal Awur in five. Look at the international flavor in that one. Over to you, Lewis. We talked about the international flavor of this meet, and here from Germany, the 26-year-old, the 2022 European champion over 100 meters, also the four by one. Please welcome Gina Luckenkemper. All right, back to some US flavor here from the United States. 26 year old was the silver medalist at the 2022 World Indoor Championships. It's Makaya Briscoe. And the bronze medalist at the 2018 World Under 20 Championships over 100 meters from Great Britain, Crystal Awahu. All righty, this is E2. Top two get to the final. It's going to be tight as well. And here we go with the call. So here is Gina Luckenkemper. Ran a PR back in 2017. That was 10.95. And she was uh, just 20 years old. But last year, 
Bit of a surprise winner at those European Championships, even though she'd taken medals in previous editions. Comes from Berlin, the German capital. So Ashanti Moore of Jamaica goes in lane two. Season best of 11-12, almost a PR for her. Gina Lukenkamp of Germany in three, second to right. Nikia Briscoe goes in four, and Crystal O'Wurr of Great Britain to the left in lane five. Really good start there from Mikia Briscoe. Briscoe, the uh, silver medalist in the World Indoor Championships last year, leading at the moment. They're trying to chase it down. Briscoe, though, being caught by, reeled in by looking Kemper, but does she get there? I don't think so. I think Briscoe might have just taken that one. The American beating the German, I think, by the tiniest of margins. One metre per second win behind them. 11 seconds exactly the uh, winning time. Look and Kemper takes it. Well, it was so tight that line. 11 seconds dead to 11 0 1. Very, very tight at the line. Ashanti Moore taking third, 11 10. That means Ashanti Moore does go through as the non automatic qualifier. What a powerful start there by Briscoe and Luke and Kemper keeping the pressure on right there. But Briscoe trying really hard to hold her off. Luke and Kemper just getting that little bit of a lean, almost too close for us to call. And T, down to you. I had the finish line here with Gina. So Gina, this is not your average track meet. So how do you prepare for an event like this? Oh, we just thought like, let's get out here and have some fun. Um, the crowd, like having you pe people like so close to us is just amazing and like, I was so looking forward to come out here. I've been to Boston before, but um, this is so amazing. I'm having so much fun out here, and I'm just glad that I get to be here today. Yes, we love to hear it. So I know you didn't get to watch a race yet, but what do you feel like you executed right? Uh, the end of it, but like the start, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I can, I will have a conversation with Coach about that because he <laughs> won't be happy with that. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the final, like, 30 meter of the race, I executed very, very good. Just like the first part of the race, I still have to like get that part right. But I think if I get that part right, I might be able to go stop 11 today. Oh yeah, well we're definitely looking forward to seeing you in the final here, okay? Thank you. Absolutely, we'll see her in the final. Looking Kemba winning in 11 seconds flat from Briscoe's 11.01. There's the result of the uh, first heat. Hobbs winning in 10.93 and uh, the second heat, Luke and Kemba winning in 11 exactly. Briscoe 11 01. Ashanti Moore makes it through with equaling her personal best there, 11 10 in third place, the 22 year old Jamaican. And there's the uh, five athletes with the green cues beside their names who make it through to the final. That women's 100 meters final is at 9 25. So they've got, what, an hour and just over an hour and 15 minutes to prepare for that next race. Well, there's the aerial view of that pole vault runway. It's kind of uh, weird when you get up on it. You're looking down at the far end there where the athletes start. They're about three feet in the air, but they are used to it. You get quite a few pole vault competitions like this now in city centers and uh, raised platforms that they have to sprint down holding that pole are not a rarity. Matt Ludwig has had two failures at uh, 571 this next tight 18 8 and three quarters i can tell you that sam kendricks went clear second time basket so three men clear can ludwig join them oh no that's annoying now i thought he had the height though he just didn't have, didn't have the penetration across the line of the bar in the in the horizontal plane just didn't get enough forward force but he had the height and he's frustrated with that so he exits the competition, as did Luke Widner with his three failures. Clayton Fritsch uh, exited the previous height, so he's sixth. Matt Ludwig, fifth. Clayton Luke Widner, fourth. And three fellas now to battle it out as the bar moves up to 5 meters 76, 18, 10, and three quarters. I mentioned earlier this is an exclusively U.S. field, which underlines the strength of vaulting in the USA. There's very few nations who could put six competitors of this caliber together in a domestic competition, if any other nations, actually. But Austin Miller, out in front at the moment, with the first time clearances at three of his four heights, just had a little hiccup at the second height, 
at 5.46. Sam Kendricks hasn't had the smoothest progression through this next time. Cleared uh, 5.61, 18.4 and three quarters at the third time of asking. Both the two fellows who are still in there with him cleared that height first time. Then he cleared 571 this last height at the second time. So that was 18, 8 and 3 quarters. But will he uh, pull out a big vault now to show his uh, undoubted class, Sam Kendricks? He has had a tough time though. Injured last year, as Carrie said, and then uh, came back into competition in January after becoming a new father when Le his wife Leanne gave birth to a, a son in October. He won his 10th US title. Right, okay. What he called a Hail Mary on his last attempt. Now, okay. Jacob Wood takes his first attempt at uh, 576, 18, 10, and three quarters. It's only his second failure of the evening. Austin Miller will be next to go, the competition leader. Come on now. What's your name, my man? Elijah. This is Elijah. Come on here. Then what's your name? Jaden. Jaden. All right. All right. Come on in here between me and T. So well, here it is again. That's a attempt from Wooden at 576. No, that didn't look close. Hard to tell from the angle we're looking up at with that camera, but that didn't look really close to me. That looked a little tired, that ball. I talked earlier, Carrie, about how some athletes come into competitions and maybe don't want to interrupt training if things are going really well and they're in a big block of training. So it could be that some athletes are coming are a little bit tired, but, you know, wanting to get a run out of the way. But even that's what happens in the, in the beginning stages of a season. You see how far that endurance on the vault can last and then you get to get back home and get back to work to put those finishing touches on listen this is early on they are all getting these markers and yes they want to win but it's really what's going to happen down the road at the world champs and even at our national champs in order to make that team austin miller then well he's sort of crept up on the inside lane because he leads the competition and uh Cleared his opening height first time, second height second time, but first time clearance is at 561 and 571. This is 576, 18, 10 and three quarters. Can he sort of uh, increase his lead, so to speak? No. And again, this is beginning to get serious. Almost 19 feet. Enjoying himself there out there. The falters. Are, generally speaking, a really happy bunch, aren't they? They have to be. I guess the trials and tribulations of travelling around with those with those uh, poles all over the circuit. <laughs> if you're not going to laugh at everything that goes wrong, you're, you're, you're going to spend half your life miserable. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was, you know, I think that they they are such good guys. They're all hanging out, and gals, they're all hanging out there. You know, but I think when you are jumping this high and you're putting it all on the line, like, this is a big event where mentally you have to be focused, you have to be almost fearless and almost a little bit, you know, goofy at times to just go for it. You were it. trying to say nuts, weren't you? No, no, but I know that there have been so many athletes before that have had to take a little bit of a step back because it is so high and they are trying to be so fearless. It's a heavy thing at times doing this pole vault. So I think keeping it light and having fun with the fellow competitors is a really big thing. Now an opportunity for Sam Kendricks next to vault to go from third to first to take the lead here. Nobody yet clear at 576, 18, 10, and three quarters. Kendricks has been here dozens and dozens of times. He retains a youthful exuberance, Sam Kendricks, that is really refreshing. Had a chat with him yesterday. I haven't seen him for ooh, a couple of years, and he was absolutely as bubbly as ever, so positive. It's one of those guys who I think wakes up smiling every morning, Sam Kendricks. Well, either that or you know that if things aren't going well for him, he might get quiet, but he's going to figure it out. Like, that's just him. You know, he's he serves our country. He serves his sport. Like, he's just a really serious guy, but yet he's lighthearted. 
and I think that he takes this really, really serious. Well, there's that great story at the Rio Olympics. I mean, uh, I remember it. He, he stopped mid-run during a pole vault attempt to stand at attention yes. while the Star Stangled Banner was played. Right. It was, you know, and he, he's, a, he's a, a first lieutenant in the, in the U.S. Army. And uh, boy, does he take that part of his life seriously as well. So, Kendricks then. First attempt for him, he's one of just three left in. The, the other two in the competition have failed at this height. 18, 10 and three quarters. No. Oh, no, but that was possibly the best of the three failures. If, he, if you're gonna give marks out of 10, that was an eight. Well, he just came close with his, it was almost like his ankles brushed it early on. So just kind of missed up that getting up and over his hips were over. But you know, you just watch him. Everything that he does, like even down to his breathing, it's all technical. Yeah, just hit it right there with the shins. Well, the atmosphere here in Centennial Olympic Park, absolutely buzzing. The sun is lowering in the sky. Sunset not far away now. And then the lights and the atmosphere of this uh, rather glorious city center venue will pick up dramatically. The crowd's loving it, being so close up to these athletes. Stars, they'll see on TV for uh, much of the summer ahead. Jacob Wooden next to go will be his, uh, he's the first to go at this height a second time in the vault. We'll keep you up to date with that vault. We're down to the uh, real business end of this discipline. Here he is. 576, 18, 10 and three quarters. He's had one attempt. It wasn't very convincing. Can he be more convincing here? No. no. You know, even adjusting now as the sunlight gets a little bit lower, I wonder if the athletes have to take all of that into consideration. It's still bright and they have bright lights, but it, there's all of these little things that us as runners don't have to think about. Well, that's a good job because running's not nearly as tough as pole vaulting. <laughs> but you and I, that's why we're runners, but right? These, these guys are used to it. You know, the, 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 the drama and the multiple, multiple action going on in a stadium uh, at most track meets is something they just have to put to one side and, and to focus upon their, uh, their discipline. So the noise and the chit chat and the shouting and kids screaming and everything is something they're used to, I guess. And certainly this is uh, one way of pre prepping yourself for that in the season. Austin Miller now, can he go clear? No, no. That didn't look very convincing either. But the funny thing is these guys have been there and done it. They know they can get over this height and they're figuring it out. And that's the frustration for him. He's thinking, yeah, this is what I did wrong. These tiny imperfections in technique is what's stopping them going clear. He's a huge fella as Miller, isn't he? Still the competition leader, though nobody yet clear at this height. If it stays this way, he's the uh, winner. He won Mount Sack last month. Only seventh in the US Indoor Championships back on February the 18th, so this is quite some step up for him. He was at Mount Sack, he said his PR of 580. 19 feet and a quarter inch. Conditions here in the park, well, they're pretty good. I'm just looking at some flags down the track, out of this shot, of course. And they're, they're blowing a little bit, but not really stiffly in the wind. So there's a slight breeze across the arena. If anything, I guess you could say it might be in the faces of these vaulters, as we see Kendricks preparing for his next go. It's possibly coming from their left a little bit and in front of them. Sam Kendricks has seen the other two guys in this competition fail at the second time of asking. Austin Miller and Jacob Wooden, they are first and second respectively. Kendricks in third has another chance now to snatch the lead. Nice rhythm, good speed from Kendricks. Oh, now again, that was close. You've got to believe. I remember he cleared up. 
No, the computer's just gone wrong, I think, and it shows so that he cleared that, but he didn't. So that'll readjust in a minute. He cleared uh, 561, 18, 4 and 3 quarters early on at the third time of Arsenal. Here's one attempt left. I'll take you down to Kerry now. Kerry Tullison. All right, everybody. I have the privilege of talking with Jackie Joyner Kersey. Everybody, this is Jackie Joyner Kersey. Like, has won so many Olympic gold medals, every medal in the world championships, silver, bronze, all of it. But Jackie, you're watching every single event because you've done them all. Yes, it's pretty exciting out here, you know, in Atlanta. The atmosphere is great and just seeing all the athletes compete. And then also it's fun to see the young people out here as well running. You know, everyone is excited to see you. I mean, the the buzz has been that Jackie's here. You started the race this morning for Ahmad. How was that? Oh, it was really just uplifting, you know, for Wanda, you know, Ahmad's mother, you know, and to have so many people to come out and support the cause. and. No, and just bring awareness and when you talk about mental health and the work that the foundation is doing it was just really a great one 5k this morning at least i got to hold the, uh, the finish line i didn't have to do 5k <laughs> so you know she wants us to talk about him she wants us to celebrate him and we celebrate a lot of things here in track and field you know you have been a competitor for so many years but now you've been away from this sport for a little while anna hall is doing some major damage isn't she are you getting a little nervous about that record you know what i'm not you know anna hall is a tremendous person talent and i love to see her put it all together what better person to do it i love anna hall and her family and her coaches well thank you so much for coming out thank you Well, the Mondo foot speed uh, kids are out there. The best three working as hard as possible between those timing posts. Who is going to be quickest? Great for these kids to be in the spotlight. Inspire classmates, inspire age groups. There's a few coaches who like to get hold of these kids. There's raw talent there are plenty, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Find your discipline. One, two, four, eight, fifteen. Hey, who knows? Maybe a marathon. Great thing about track and field is there's a discipline for everybody. Whatever your shape, whatever your size something will work for you something will present you with opportunities and it's great to see these kids here today getting an opportunity to shine in front of friends and family and classmates <laughs> well he's no school kid i oh, know i oh, know saves on weight uh oh. I know that Jackie Joyner said that she wanted to get out on this track. Maybe they need to race her. Uh, you got to say there's some impressive speed there. crowd getting fired up by a bit of fun before the next event the uh, BNA finals of the men's 150 meters and boy is there some quality in those two races coming up they're due up those up men's 150s at 822 so we're looking at uh, oh, a couple of minutes ago I think The bar is at 18 feet, 10 and three quarters of an inch. Austin Miller is out. Jacob Wooten is out. Sam Kendricks has one more attempt at this bar. 
18 feet, 10 and three quarters of an inch. But we are about to turn our attention back to the track. Sam Kendrick's going over. And Kendrick misses at 18 feet, 10 and three quarters of an inch. So it's just exciting, a lot of things happening here. But now we've got the finish line tape up because we're ready now for the section two of the men's 150 meter dash. And this is a sprint that uses the entire track from the Olympic rings to where we are now. So here it is, section two in lane one from the United States, 32 year old two time US champion, Amir Webb. Let's give Amir some applause. All right. Another international visitor in lane three from Great Britain and Northern Ireland, 26 year old spr British sprinter, OG Odeboran. In lane three, he is known as a man who can sprint from the country we know as TTO, Trinidad and Tobago. The 29 year old 2022 world indoor champion is Jareem Richards. Come on, let Jareem hear you. In lane four, looking at this long track in front of him is a 28 year old American, the 13 time MVC champion for Northern Ira over 60 meters, 100 meters, and 200 meters. It's Brandon Carnes. And rounding out the field is this 31 year old American, an experienced veteran finalist at the 2020 U.S. Indoor Championships over 60 meters. Please welcome Chris Royster. Semi-final section two of the men's 150 meter dash. And this is a long straightaway race. Strange and difficult to judge. And here for the call is Tim and Kerry. Lewis. Yes, it is difficult to judge. 100 meters, you can give just about everything from the get-go, from the gun. 200, you have to judge your effort very carefully. 150, it's that in-between territory. How hard do you go over the first 50? How hard do you hit it through 100? This is, for many of these fellas, this is a very, very tough one. And for several of them, it's a totally new event. Brandon Carnes and Chris Royster, left of picture. The two lanes left a picture. I've never run this before. But watch Jareem Richards of Trinidad and Tobago, world indoor 400 meter champion last year, Commonwealth Games champion last year as well. The uh, Trinidad and Tobago man in the center. Going really well on the uh, right of picture. Amir Webb at the moment. Amir Webb, but also going really strongly. Brandon Carnes. Brandon Carnes in the black. Second to left. Looks like he's leading to me. But here comes Richards unfolding those long 400 meter runners' legs, and he takes it. By about half a meter, 14.82. Well, that is very close to his lifetime best of 14.75. If that time is confirmed, 14.83 it is for Jareem Richards. Chris Royster was not far behind in second place, 14.89. Remember, these are not qualifying heats. There are two races, the uh, B race and the A race coming up. Brandon Kahn's 14.97. The first three under 15 seconds, but... Uh, Jareem Richards using the full 150 to take the win. That's exactly right. He used that full 150. His 200 meter PR is 1980. He used that endurance that he has over half the track outdoors, and he looked really smooth in the last 50 meters here. Down to UT. Here. All right, I got Jareem Richards with me right here. So doing 150 meters straight is a little bit odd. So talk us through what you just did here. Um, personally for me, the guys that run the 100 because it's on a straight, they definitely have a big advantage against me. So it's all about just trying to stay patient, trusting my training, trusting my top end speed. And that's what happened at the end. I was able to pull through at the end. But you really need to stay patient against these guys who run the 100 meters. No, and that was an incredible finish. Like, you got them right at the perfect moment, it seemed like. So we all know you are a 400 guy. That's your main race. So give us one thing you want to execute going into this outdoor season. My 400 is not really the main race. It's more the two, but what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the four, also. I'm also a 400 meter runner. I mean, going into the season, I just want to PR in every um, event I run this year and, um, you know, make it to the World Championships and become a medalist. So, I mean, that's the goal to the season for sure. Well, we wish you the best this outdoor season. Congratulations, everybody. Jareem Richards, make some noise. 
I get so Rico. emotional. Not asking for much. Wants a PR in every event he runs this yeah, year. Yeah, and he just wants to do better. I mean, for me, that's all. Like, I love this sport that way. And I love when people share their goals. They're vulnerable like that. It just got, I got the, the goosebumps there watching Jareem Richards and hearing him talk. Oh, he's a lovely fella. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and chatting with him at the Commonwealth Games last year in Birmingham, yeah. UK. And uh, he is a super pleasant fella. Uh -huh. Look at that. Great performer, too, in that time, you know, 1483. Yeah, he looked good. I mean, he just looks small. I, when he was in the starting block, so did you see his hips come up? His hips were really high. He had a great start. Chris Royster and Brandon Carnes both went on the 15 seconds as well. Wow. That's great running from the three of them. Uh, how will that compare with the times of the guys in the A final, which is coming up next? And that is the big race. I mean, Yala, Noah Lyles, Arian Knight, Nathaniel Mitchell Blake. It is a super packed with talent. Ooh. A race coming up very shortly. Well, back to this uh, pole vault where Austin Miller came out on top. As so often is the case with the uh, vertical jumps, ironically, you can win an event but finish on failure. And that's what happened to him. Third time failure there at 5 meters 76, 18, 10, and 3 quarters. Would have been nice to see his winning vault. That was at 5.71, a first time clearance, 18, 8, and 3 quarters. He was the only athlete to go clear. He looks okay, but he definitely rolled off that mat. But I loved again seeing his five, four, three, counting down his steps before he had that final attempt. Well, there's the scene at Centennial Olympic Park as the floodlights become more and more helpful to us here. The sun is setting behind us somewhere. And that is confirmation of the result of the men's pole vault. Austin Miller, 18, 8 and 3 quarters, the winner with 5 meters 71. Same height, in fact, as Staple Wooden and Sam Kendrick. But he cleared it first time. They cleared it, uh, each of them, second time. And Wooden finishes ahead of Kendricks, going back to the previous hike, where Kendricks only cleared third time. Windup, Ludwig and Fritsch bringing up the second half of that, uh, that result caption. So one of the highlights of the night will be coming up very shortly. The uh, men's B-150 will be followed by the women's B-150. Seems kind of, I, I don't know, I never feel comfortable with calling it a B race because there's such talent amongst these fellas and ladies. That's a nice shot. Yeah. The pole vault crew. These events require so much assistance. And a big shout out too for the volunteers and everybody helping out to make these events work here today. Just could not happen without them. So huge thank you to everybody who's contributed. I know that there was a, an extra shout out for volunteers yesterday, which was answered well by the people of Atlanta. Well, the tension racks up as we enter this uh, golden hour or so of climactic racing here in Centennial Olympic Square in Atlanta. You can see those flags, by the way, still blowing fairly healthily. There's a bit of breeze across the arena, but they're 30, 40 feet up in the air. Down here on the arena floor, and our finished commentary position is just at the far end there near the finish line. Uh, there's not a great deal of breeze down here. We're kind of shows it feels really good but yeah you can definitely see that the, the wind has picked up just a little bit but as you said earlier in the show the athletes will like a little bit of a tailwind and i think that they will have just a slight one slight tailwind and a pretty kind temperature as well yeah here in the, in the park it's not a bad temperature at all it's not nearly as much 70 it's degrees freezing. 70 degrees there perfect that's like a, a stinking hot summer's day in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> no, I jest. I continually uh, tell my American friends that actually UK summers are generally pretty good. You know, we get a little bit of rain here and there, but they're generally pretty good. The temperatures in the 80s are very common. So dispel all those thoughts about the UK being grey and wet all the time. It's only about 80% of the time. 
Well, it is fun down here with the Ferris wheel and the the fountains and the rings and all of that. If you're just tuning in, we have had quite a spectacular day seeing athletes of all ages. And we are getting to some big ones now. We are indeed, yes. And there is the lineup of the uh, four athletes for this uh, women's 150 B race. Let me tell you down to Lewis Johnson. Women's 150 underway right now. Alrighty, so in lane one, we've got a Navy Battle of the United States. Let's give her a round of applause. In lane two, Tamari Davis of the United States. In lane three, American Gabby Thomas is here in lane three, all right. From Great Britain, in lane four will be Daryl Netta. And in lane five, Lena Irby Jackson. And some of you may be wondering what happened to Anna Hall. She has scratched from this race because she wants to focus on the women's 100 hurdle final coming up. So Anna Hall will be back on the track in just a little bit in that women's 100 hurdle final. All righty, here's the call with Tim and Carey. Thank you, Lewis. Yes, in fact, this the uh, B race and uh, Lauren Rain Williams to the right of picture goes in lane two. Anna Hall has indeed withdrawn from this. She's already set a huge PR in the 100 meter hurdles earlier on this evening. There is William, silver medalist in the 2018 World Under 20 Championships over 200 meters. Angie Nellis of the USA, the 26 year old, goes in three. Shannon Ray, finest in the US Indoor Championships a couple of years back. She goes in four, best of uh, 2283 for 200 she's never run a 150 a lot of these athletes for a lot of these athletes this is a new experience a new distance and therefore a new test and ramona Burchell uh, has uh, never run a 150 either the gold medalist in the olympic games four by 100 meters in tokyo a couple of years back she ran in the heats for the usa so once again judgment more keenly required to cope with this distance than uh, some of these athletes have ever been asked of because they're familiar with 100s and 200s. You run those dozens of times in college track and field, but 150 is a different distance, it's tough. Williams in two to the right of pitcher, and Ellis in three, Ray in four, Burchell to the left. Well, away they go. Looked like a really good start from Angianellis. Fourth in the World Championships 2019 over 200 meters. Anellis, tall and powerful and going well. Williams, though, looking strong on the far side, but Anellis going to take it there, winning it by about a meter and a half. And that winning time, 16.58. Let's take a look at this uh, race that's just gone by with Anellis winning pretty comfortably from above. And there they are, right a picture, boom, away they go. No much separation over the first 50. Then beginning to ease away, second from the uh, bottom of those four, Anelos. Although on the far side, Ramona Burchell had a great run as well. Anelos just pulling through over the last 30 or 40 meters. She probably put a meter on the rest of them over the last 30 meters or so. She judged that really well and lasted well. Climb with me now, Angie. You usually run a 200. Today you just did the 150 meters. Do you miss that 50 meters or no? Uh, right now, no. <laughs> but you know, I'm just happy to be out here and get some training in. So this is just fun. So how are you preparing for this outdoor season coming up? Um, just really trying to put the work in, just get back into it, um, get my head on right, but show it on the track. For sure. Well, we're looking forward to you this outdoor season and congratulations. Everybody, give make some noise for Miss Angie. Miss Angie, clearly very happy with her evening's work. Two-time NCAA champion, over 200 meters in 2018 and 2019. And there is confirmation of that winning time, 16.58 from uh, Anelis. And Miss Angie from Ramona Butchell of uh, Jamaica, 16.73. All of them well under 17 seconds there. Anelis just looked like she kept her foot on the pedal the whole way. It was really never bothered by anybody in that race. It wasn't like she was way out in front, but she had enough of a lead the entire way to look relaxed. 
but she said she wasn't. She was happy she didn't have that extra 50 meters but, to run. But you know what? The distance is so demanding, and if you don't get it right, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can lose a lot of ground. And actually, the way she pulled away in the last 30 or 40 really showed Shows how well strength. she judged it. She held her form really well, yep. and I think others did, didn't hold it quite so well, maybe slightly misjudged it. Oh, it's the oh, mascot race. Yay. It's your favorite race, Karen. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. I kind of thought you should get out there and do, do it. Yeah, wouldn't Couldn't you just be like a big microphone? Say again? <laughs> I said, could you just be a big microphone? What are you trying to say? I mean, you like to talk, you like to be on a microphone, so you might as well dress up like what? These guys seem to be getting on well. It's looking so beautiful out here in Centennial Olympic Park. Hope you're having a great time here at this first ever Atlanta City Games. And uh, wait a minute, what, what's going on here on the track? Who is this? What's going on here? Oh, you guys want to race? Oh, I see. So this wasn't on the schedule. And look who shows up. Pete the Peach, which is the Atlanta Track Club mascot. You, buy, you, can, you can cheer for Pete, all right. And Harry the Hawk from the Atlanta Hawks. Really? Okay. So by a round of applause, who do you guys think is going to win? Let's hear it for Pete the Peach. Hmm, okay. What about Harry the Hawk? You think he has a chance? Oh, okay. Peach, you got your work cut off. You better take those sunglasses off. All righty. If you'll get to your marks. Set, go! Not, I'm not quite sure about this. What is going on here? Pete, Harry? I mean, where's the, oh, it looks like a tie to me. What do you think? So who do you guys think won this? Was it Harry the Hawk? Was it Pete the Peach? I don't know, Harry. You were all over Pete the Peach, man. You bumped him. You knocked him over. I mean, I think we call this a draw. What do you think? It's a draw. Let's hear it for both the mascots. Pete the Peach and Harry the Hawk here at the Atlanta City Games. Good sports in the end. I think there might have been a lane violation there. I'm not sure Pete the Peach gives a damn. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, he like he, owns this I'll place. I'll have some of what he's on. He's got all kinds oh. of, the, the Atlanta Track Club has so many members that love him. He's not worried about it. Well, we have some supra, supreme races coming up. And I think we can show you very shortly a list of what is coming up. The creme de la creme is the best save to last qualifiers for finals. And those uh, A-Race 150s coming at us here it is the women's 150 a race final the men's 100 final uh, the uh, women's final of 100 hurdles the men's final of 110 meter hurdles remember the, the athletes running in those events the heats a couple of hours ago final women of the 100 the men's 150 final in which we're expecting something pretty special we heard uh, earlier on uh, rich Kennard, the uh, ceo of Atlanta Track Club saying he's hoping for a world record maybe tonight. Well, conditions are good. The wind's in the favor of the athletes. The temperature stayed pretty, pretty nice and warm. And who knows, Karen? No Lyles is in special form. Well, yeah, we know that. He has had a, a few things that have happened already in this season that's maybe fueling him a little bit. He did say the end of the summer is what he's pointing to, but he wants this. And, you know, it's kind of fun to see him run this off distance. He's been running the 100 a little bit more. We saw him run the 60 a little bit more indoors. But obviously, we know he runs at 200 like nobody else. So it's going to be fun to see him run this distance and have it all be straight, right? Not on the turn. It's going to be fun. Well, there's some big names going this uh, women's 150 A race. In particular, Gabby Thomas, Olympic bronze medalist in Tokyo, who has never run a 150 before. This is new territory for the Harvard graduate born here though born in atlanta so has a lot of friends here is excited to be back here loves this this style of racing in on the 
you know, elevated track. She said it's really fun. She's done the Adidas Boost Games in Boston when they were there, and she loved it. So I asked her, why did you choose to come back? She said, just because it was so much fun. Well, of course, Carrie, we all know in the last few days we lost a, a great athlete, Tori Bowie of the USA, world champion back in London 2017 at uh, 100 meters. What a great shame. Yeah, she holds the American record for the 150 meters. Yeah, we're going to miss her. She was quite the athlete, quite the person. Beautiful looking athlete, too. God bless her. So if you would please just let's just get quiet for a moment and have a moment of silence in the memory of American Tori Bowie. Thank you. And now let's give her a round of applause that she can hear all the way up in heaven. The tape is up and we're ready now. I'm gonna give you these introductions again that I mistakenly gave you earlier. Okay, in lane one from the United States is a Navy of Battle semifinalist at the 2021 Olympic Games. A Navy of Battle, lane one. In lane two, the 20-year-old American, the winner of the 2023 Florida Relays in the 100 meters, this is Tamari Davis. In lane three, from Atlanta, Georgia, the 26-year-old Harvard grad, Bronze medalist in the Tokyo Olympic Games, Gabby Thomas is here. In lane four, the bronze medalist from the 2022 European Championships from Great Britain and Northern Ireland, it's Daryl Netta. And in lane five, the 24-year-old American sprinter, lots of experience, gold medalist at the Tokyo Olympic Games in the four by one, it's Lena Irby Jackson. Section one of the men's, women's 150, and now the call. Gabby Thomas starts right in the middle. Home advantage to Gabby Thomas. NCAA champion over 200 back in 2018, making a debut here, over 150. Recently broke 50 seconds for 400 meters for the first time, indicating Strength training has gone really well through the winter, but how well will she go here? A Navia battle in lane one, Tamara Davis in two, Gabby Thomas in the middle in three, then Daryl Nita of Great Britain goes in four, Lina Irby Jackson of the USA in five to the left. Well, away they go. A really good start there from Tamari Davis in lane two. She certainly leads over the first 30 or 40. Gabby Thomas, though, with that 400 meter run of strength and a 200 meter speed. Will she come back at Tamari Davis? Davis still going really strongly here at the moment. Davis leading at the moment. It's going to be tight at the line. Wow, Davis takes it, I think. Fourth at the US Championships last year over 100 meters. She has a PR of 17 seconds exactly. She's just smashed that with 16.44. Daryl Nita taking second place and Gabby Thomas in third place there, just two 100s behind the Brit, the runner-up. But uh, Tamari Davis creating one of the great runs of the night with 16.44. Remember the winning time in the first heat, 16.58 in that uh, B race, so to speak, from Angie Anelos. Wow, led from the gun and never got caught. She never got caught. She got out of those blocks better than anybody and she really powered her way home and she looked so good. Watch this, out of the blocks, tight, looking smooth. Eyes are coming up and all eyes were on that finish line and she did not look around, she didn't move, she knew she was gonna win this race. Look great. Amari Davis, your season is off to a great start. Like, talk about it. I'm just happy. 
I'm healthy. And like you said, this season has started so well, so I'm ready to keep going. Oh. You tired? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what are you most looking forward to this outdoor season? I mean, just like we said, the season's coming to a great start. So just one thing you want to execute or one thing that you're most looking forward to? Just my whole race in the one and two. Yeah. Just, like I said, we're finishing healthy mm -hmm. and maintaining my focus. So you looking for that double? Yeah. Hey, okay, I love to hear it. Everybody make some noise, please, for Miss Tamari Davis, the youngest out the field. Make some noise for my girl. Absolutely. I think after 150, that beautifully judged, you're entitled to go few. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And it's exciting that she's so excited. She said her season is starting the right way. Look at that, PB, 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 that's great. Three of them. Well, these athletes don't get, often get a chance to run a 150. That's why there are PBs in there, and they've uh, all come out of the winter pretty well in great shape. Davis, Nina, Thomas, one, two, three there, and covered by just uh, 16 hundredths of a second. It was tight. Well, coming up, the men's 100 meters final. Simbine against Oblique Seville against Zarnell Hughes. It's a, a wonderfully poised final. Five athletes out there. Who will be the best of the best tonight here in Atlanta? When I put my running bike on, it empowers me. I break barriers every day. Running makes me feel strong, and I'm stronger with every kilometer. So the five athletes then who raced a couple of hours ago out on the track and ready to do battle. Right in the middle is the man who was uh, quickest in the first round heats, and that was Oblique Seville. Those are their personal best, but he ran 10.03 to be the fastest in the qualifying round. Just keeping loose out of the track. Well, right in the middle there, Tim. Oblique Seville. He looks so good in that first round. I think he's the one to watch right now. In lane one, excited to be back. You heard him say that to T a few moments ago after that first round run is the American Terrence Lay Laird with a season's best of 10-16. In lane two from South Africa, a great qualifying heat to get in here, is the South African Akani Sambine. All right. In lane three, we've got the Jamaican Oblique Seville, a season's best of 9.95. In lane four is the British athlete, Zarnell Hughes. And rounding out the field, another Jamaican. It's gonna be spicy, y'all. This is Raheem Ford rounding out this field. So five athletes out on the track. One winner can come out of these five. Terence Laird goes over in lane one. He was third in his heat in 10-16, but he's done well to get through to this, has Laird. Simbine 
second in the second heat in 10.09 in lane two, second to right. Seville, the fastest of all in 10.03, goes in the center. Zarnell Hughes, second to left. And then Riam Ford to the left of Victor. Away they go. Really good start there from Simbine. The South African, second to right, quickest out of the blocks and leading the moment. They're trying to come back. And is he going to get there? No, I think maybe Seville took it on the lead. I think 9.99, the 10 second barrier broken here tonight in Centennial Olympic Park. But who got it? Oblique Seville gets it, 9.99 to Zimbine's 10.01. Zarnell Hughes, 10.01 in third place. Wow, that was tight. That was so good. You should have heard how hard they went into that crash board and they are all smiles, they had fun. But Seville, he kept his focus the entire way. He had to have felt all those bodies around him the entire way. Look at him getting out a little bit behind. In that first heat, he was way out after the start. This one right now, he is right with everybody right there. Every single one of these guys still in the race, and he just out leans everyone Seville did. And watch this. Woo! That was an awesome race. Fabulous racing. Down to UT. All right, I got Oblique, Seville, the young Jamaican superstar in the building. Y'all make some noise for my boy already. Yes, sir. So Jamaica has always and will always be dominant in the sprints. That's no, that's no surprise. But with you being so young, do you ever feel pressure? No, because, because as long as you, you perform to an extreme, a lot of people is going to have a high expectation, but it's just for you just to do what you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what are some things you like to get into off the track? Well, I love to take in pictures, which is photography. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite picture that you have taken so far? Well, it's on my Instagram, so you guys can check it out. <laughs> Give us your ad name so we can go look at it. Um, Oblique Civil. All right, y'all. What's your ad name? Yeah. All right, y'all, go check out his Instagram to see that picture. Congratulations on going to win, y'all. Make some noise for Oblique Civil. Absolutely make some noise for Oblique Seville, the only man under 10 seconds, conveniently separated from the rest by that 10 second barrier. 999, Sambine second, 1001. And Zarnell Hughes third in the same time. Five one thousandths of a second back Zarnell Hughes from Simbine. Season's best for him. Riam Ford, a personal best. Again. 10 That's yeah. the second time tonight. 10 12 and 10 Yeah, Ford 07. had a big night. Congratulations. He came here tonight, Terence uh, uh, Ford, rather, Riam Ford, with a best of 10.18. Yeah. And he goes home with a 10.07. I love it. Wow. It's a big year. Everyone wants to run fast. They want to get there to the World Championships. And then next year is the Olympic Games. So, you know, it's just going to build. If they can have a great year this year, they're going to have a great one next year, hopefully. If they can stay healthy and stay in it. Crowd loving it. We're going to love it, too. The women's 100-meter hurdles coming up next. Beautiful view of a beautiful blue track here in the Centennial Olympic Park in Atlanta for these inaugural Atlanta City Games of 2023. Big plaudits to uh, TJ and Renee who are backstage putting together this production and all the guys working on the production as well. And a big shout out once again. If you didn't hear me earlier, to all the volunteers who are working so hard to make things run smoothly here tonight. It's, uh, it's not a stadium. It's not built for this sort of activity. It's all been constructed. It's all had to be put together. All right, everybody. Well, it is a beautiful night for racing. We are having so much fun. We're hearing all the sounds of being in a huge city like Atlanta. We're hearing people with their, their bases pumping um, on the back street here behind us. 
but everyone is filling in. You can see at, some of the women are out here with their hats on from celebrating the royalty this week here in Atlanta and also across the pond where we saw King Charles today in his coronation. So we have a lot of different people in the crowd. But look at these beautiful shots. We have had so many people coming out tonight to watch, but look at who they got to see. 15 world championship and Olympic gold medalists, 13 Olympic medalists, 24 world championship medalists. We have nine American record holders that are competing in the games here and also four world record holders. I mean, they put it together. Adidas, Atlanta Track Club, and Global Athletics and Marketing really have put on a show tonight, building this track for two, three days, making it safe, and we've been having a blast. The music's pumping. All the athletes are dancing. They get done, they're high-fiving, they're excited. As we said, in nine weeks, the U.S. Nationals will take place. Six weeks after that, World Championships will be in Budapest, Hungary. Running makes me feel happy. I feel more energetic when I run in the morning. It gives me energy and you start your day in a good way. What's your sort of earliest memory of running? I did run a lot when I was young. I used to wake up and pray and then run at five in the morning. Kenya. <laughs> 2021-2022 nilikuwa mwanamke wa kwanza wa kike win Olympic marathon na New York marathon na Boston marathon When I think about Paris I think you know she likes to challenge her winning starts you know, from the beginning Ah uh, bado na nataka record tena ya wanawake Running needs nothing. It was born free. Goalpost free. Hoop free. Finish line free. Running only takes two legs. Sometimes not even. doesn't care who gets there first, whether you're breaking records or setting a record for too many breaks. Running just needs you to show up and run as you are. for this 30-year-old American who went to Kentucky. She's the American record holder over this event, Kenny Harrison. And the heat continues with another athlete who had a tremendous semifinal, third in the 2023 U.S. Indoor Championships from the United States, 28-year-old Amber Hughes. And rounding out this field, this is gonna be something. From Liberia, 28-year-old silver medalist from the 2022 African Championships, please welcome Ebony Morrison. So should I talk to Jackie now? Well. Ebony Morrison there will be on the outside, so to speak, in lane five. Morrison, 12.74, her personal best. You're in 12.88 to make it through to this uh, final. Second in the second heat. Tia Jones, though, with 12.38. Well, she was beaten by Harrison, Kenny Harrison, in the first heat, 12.44 to 12.46. That was really tight, Kerry. It was really tight, but you know, one of the athletes in this race, Tia Jones, she went to high school here. She's got a big fan group out here tonight. You know that she's excited to come back to this final and have a great race. 
Well, Kenny Harrison drawn in the middle. That 12.20 beside her name is the old world record. It was smashed last summer at the World Championships in Eugene, Oregon, when the uh, small, compact Nigerian Toby Amazon ran 12.12 in her semi-final at those World Championships. Kenny Harrison, in fact, uh, at those uh, World Championships, was disqualified in the final after having run 12.27 in her semi behind Amazon's world record. Maybe she was psyched out. Maybe it was just one of those bad days at the office. Anna Hall, well, what a, a night she's had already. Massive personal best score on the 13 seconds for the first time for the World Championship bronze medalist in the heptathlon North American indoor record holder and the second best American of all time in the heptathlon. There she is to right of picture. Don't you love what she said to us, though? She's just learning her multi-event you know that's her main thing and she's just learning some of the disciplines in that and she's just so excited she said you know most people really kind of hit their stride and at 28 or 29 she's so young and she's got so much to look forward to and she actually said she really likes running the long distance events of that event indoors and outdoors not many people like that no they don't because you know the, the thing about the multi-events is that all the disciplines are about power and yeah. speed and technique, apart from the 800 for the women and the 1500 right. for the decathletes outdoors. So it's kind of nine speed disciplines. Then you get that one contradictory discipline. Yet she said she loves the 800. I know. That's a good, good. That's a good place for your head to be. I exactly. think. Exactly. If you can believe and and feel like that's one of your best, you know, <laughs> talents in that kind of event, look out. So right in the center, Kenny Harrison with a point to prove. The second fastest athlete in history with that 12.20 world record for 2016, which has now gone. She had it for, uh, what, six years, did Kenny Harrison. Only had two races indoors this past winter. Didn't do a great deal. Was second in the Olympic Games to Camacho Quinn. So got a silver medal in Tokyo. But the frustration of being disqualified from that final in uh, Eugene, Oregon, I'm sure will have driven her on through training this past winter. Mm -hmm. on your mark. So on the starter's orders then, Anna Hall to the right of picture in lane one. Tia Jones, second to Kenny Harrison, a close second in their qualifying heat a couple of hours ago. She goes in two. Then Kenny Harrison goes in three, right in the center. In four is Hughes, Amber Hughes, who won the uh, second heat in 1283 and to the left of picture in lane five is uh, ebony morris the liberian not far off her personal best for second behind hughes but watch kenny harrison really quick out of the blocks there in the center harrison really fast just over those little barriers, that lead leg so fast over the barriers. Looking superb though is Tia Jones. Tia Jones challenging the cap, and it's going to be so, so tight on the line. But Tia Jones takes it. Kenny Harrison just closed down about three flights out, and Tia Jones gets revenge for the defeat in the heat. That was a 12.44 to 12.46. Tia Jones here, 12.50 to 12.53. Brilliant racing from that pair couple of heavyweights slugging it out over the second half. We'll watch Kenny Harrison gets out strong here, but Tia Davis does, Tia Jones, excuse me, does not let her out of her sight. And look at that focus coming over the hit hurdles each and every time. You know she could hear the fans. She wanted this win and look at her break the tape. The hometown favorite gets it. And that battle drawing them about two meters clear. Third place, Amber Hughes, 12.78. Anna Hall goes under 20, under 13 seconds again with 12.95 back in fifth, but she's done fantastically well. It's had a great night. Ebony Morrison, the season's best, 12.81 in fourth. I'm down here with my girl Tia Jones. We're back. This has to feel good. You're in your hometown. You have so many families, so many people here supporting you. This has to feel good. It does feel really good. I'm in my city. Mama, where are you at? Mama! <laughs> oh, she right there. <laughs> so I know this is a blessing. You know, to be able to come out here and support my fans and under God, I can do anything, so. Yes, ma'am, amen. So give us a little celebration dance. You feeling good, looking good. Give a little celebration dance. <laughs> hey, hit it, hit it, hit it, yes, ma'am. See you, y'all, y'all. Oh, 
Well, how beautiful is that, be able to celebrate with your mum? Only 22 years old, Tia Jones. What a future she's got ahead of her. World number two. 12.44 last Saturday at the Drake Relays. Here tonight, 12.46 in her heat and 12.50. Not that the time mattered so much because she got the win just now. And over she Kenny Harrison, who led for probably most of the race. Sorry, Tim, she just looks so good. She's so composed. She's young, but she has that drive and determination. She is probably so excited to be between Anna Hall and Kenny Harrison, but it was all her tonight. This was her race to win. And look at her. She looked great. There was a slight misstep from Kenny Harrison about three barriers out where she just lost her balance, lost her fluency. And I think that's where she lost the race. The uh, margin at the end, three one hundredths of a second. There it is. The honors go to Tia Jones for the moment. The posting rights, 12.50 for her, for the youngster. Kenny Harrison, 12.53. Amber Hughes there, great third, 12.78 for a season's best. Ebony Morrison's season's best. And Anna Hall, her consolation, getting under 13 seconds mm -hmm. again. She's in new territory in that discipline. She's nailed one discipline, it would seem, out of the seven she'll need for those US championships and the world championships coming up later in the summer. Yeah, something tells me she's really pleased with how her, how her events went this weekend. And she's going to go into the outdoor season on a high because that indoor season was phenomenal. You know she's thinking about that 7,000-point barrier. She wants it. And Jackie Joyner Kersey knows that she is breathing down her neck for that record. Next race, the men's 110 meter hurdles final. All right, here we go. The ladies are done, and now it's the men over the 110 meter hurdles and the finalists are standing down by the finish line. So here we go with introductions. In lane one from the United States, 2021 NCAA champion who went to high school at Cobb County, Georgia. How about the Mustangs? It's Robert Dunning. In lane two, silver medalist from the 2022 World Championships over this distance, a two-time NCAA champion, the 24-year-old American, Trey Cunningham. And right behind him, right next to him, it's going to be a battle between Cunningham and this man here, the two-time world outdoor champion over this distance, the Olympic silver medalist from Tokyo, the world record holder indoor, it's American, Grant Holloway! In lane four, this 24-year-old American who went to school at Iowa is a 2021 Big Ten champion over this distance. It is Jamal Britt. And rounding out this field in lane five, a hurdler with lots of experience. 28-year-old American, the 2023 U.S. Indoor Champion, over 60 hurdles, the silver medalist at the 2019 Pan American Games, it's Freddie Crittenden. This is your field for the men's 110-meter hurdle final, and it is going to be something special. Holloway and Cunningham have battled back and forth indoor and outdoor at the U.S. Outdoor Championships and on the world and Olympic stages. So we'll see what they have between the two of them sitting right next to each other in lanes two and three. So there is the lineup. Rob Dunning, the local fella, 13.23. He goes in one. Trey Cunningham, 13 seconds, exactly his personal best. Tonight would be a very useful time to get under 13 seconds by the NCAA champion last year. Grant Holloway, the favorite, goes in lane three. World indoor record holder, the second fastest man in history over these uh, 42 inch barriers. And Jamal Britt goes in lane four, 13.08. Crittenden. Completes the lineup there in lane five. That is a classy field, Carrie. Wow. It is, and it's so fun to see the young up and comers like Robert Dunning, who is a hometown hero. Everyone's out here cheering for him. He's quiet, but he's confident, and he knows who's in this race, and he wants to have a great one. I mean, look at who's right next to him Trey Cunningham, Grant Holloway. Pretty awesome. Well, there is. Uh, 
Cunningham. Trey Cunningham. Brilliant 2022 season. This a man who signed for the Ford Models Agency yeah. last year. Different type of runway. Have you got quite about that, Carrie? Have you mentioned it earlier? No, I didn't say anything yet. No, I was I actually one of my tidbits to use during this Save race. Thank you very much. Well, I just thought I'd steal it off you. I know you did. But you know what? I love that. I love that he's using his platform in a way that he can do something, you know, outside or beyond track. I mean, that's really what's important. We see a lot of athletes that decide to just focus on one thing, which is great. But if you have a passion for something else, and Trey Cunningham obviously has a passion for doing something different. He's a, he loves to read, he said. He loves to be on the beach. He loves to do things. So not surprising to see that maybe he'll step out and do some modeling as well. Absolutely. Well, Grant Holloway is just one of these athletes who is multi-talented. It seems whatever he touches, he does well. World champion, reigning world champion of New Eugene last year. Doesn't get much better than that, winning a world title, a world gold in front of a home crowd, retaining your gold for a world championships. And that world record in Madrid a couple of years back indoors, over 60 meter hurdles, just, you know, the, you have to hit perfection yeah. to get a world record over 60 meters hurdles. I mean, you've got seven seconds to get it right. You, you, there's no room for error. You're talking about the thickness of a sheet of paper is, yeah. is the difference between success and failure. And I just love watching him race. It is so, it, you know, obviously things can happen in the hurdles, but he just seems so perfectly technically sound, if that's the right way to put it. He just is such a cool guy to watch. It's just such power, but yet such grace. It's awesome. And 99% of elite athletes, you know, they would say, well, the peak of my track and field career was winning an NCAA title or getting a silver medal or a bronze medal or something. He's eight times an NCAA yeah. champion. So, you know, he, he, he did it all at college level and then moved very smoothly into, into yeah. being a pro athlete. Well, he's got a great head on his shoulders and that's what you have to have in order to win like that. I mean, the target's on his back all the time. Grant Holloway we're talking about. There is uh, Trey Cunningham, NCAA champion last year, world championship silver medalist. And Diamond League meetings coming up for him, he said, in uh, Rabat in Morocco in coming weeks, and then in Florence, Italy. I think I'm going to be at both of those. So I'll get to see Trey Cunningham a fair old deal in coming weeks. And it'll be interesting to see just how well he sharpens up. And the thing is about American athletes is, you know, there's, it's a, a kind of a tough theater you get thrown into as a college athlete because they race so much and march right the way through to what, June? Is it? Yep, the end of June. And, and they race and race and race for their colleges. So when they come to the pro, pro arena, so to speak, it's, it's easier for them to cope with regular racing. It's easier, but it's a huge learning uh, curve. You have to figure out how to exactly time things right. You're not just always, you know, sharp from racing. So, yeah, it's, it's different, but it is nice when you can breathe a little bit in between races. So, settling down now. Now, look at the flags. There's an interesting yeah. thing. The wind has eased. Maybe it was helping athletes up till now a little bit. Slight following wind, but it's very, very still here. So, this is pretty much zero wind on a quick surface They're 50 meters up the track from the far end of course for the start of all 40 meters up i should say for this 110 meter hurdles and holloway against cunningham gold and silver medalists respectively last year at the world championships this is the rematch so to speak as this uh, 2023 outdoor season rumbles into motion and rumbling is what these fellas are going to be doing up to that first barrier. Who's going to be quick? It's very important to get that run up to the first barrier well. Dunning in one, Cunningham in two, Grant Holloway in three. In the white, they're right in the middle. Jamal Britt goes in four, second to left, and Freddie Crittenden in five. Watch Britt. He won his heat in 13.28, the season the best. Good start from Britt, really good start from Holloway. Holloway's away, if he can keep this smooth now. Cunningham chasing hard, trying to get back to him, but he's having his own battle with, with Britt. But here comes Holloway, and he wins it there from the far side. Robert Dunning winning strongly, third set running strongly, 13-0-1 for Grant Holloway. He'll be happy enough with that. 13-15 in his heat a couple of hours back. 13-0-1 there, and it is confirmed as a new world lead. It's the fastest time in the world this year. Well, with Budapest, Hungary, 
this summer, you know he is fired up. He wants to go back and win another World Championship medal. And boy, did he look good out there. And Rob Dunning, 13.09, has just run a massive personal best. That is fantastic. <laughs> what a leap forward for the local man to take second place, 13.09. Well done, Rob Dunning. I mean, Tim, right there, to see that kind of love between those two guys. Look at, they're hyping each other up. They're fired up. Look at that right there. I mean, Robert Dunning came here. He said he's going to have 30 to 50 people in the crowd tonight, and he put out a show along with Grant Halloway. Awesome right here. Watch this. Out of the blocks. Look, it doesn't even look down. He's looking at that finish line. He has that technique so technically sound over and over. World lead right here, peeps, 13.01. Wow, and he knew it was good straight away. Grant Holloway, they glances across at the clock, and that confirms it with a bang, a massive stamp of approval on his winter training. Dunning has gone from 13.23 to 13.09 on the night. As I said, a massive personal best for Dunning. I got both of these gentlemen right here next to me. We just saw the fastest hurdle race in the world so far this year. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. So it was a it was a live reaction from all. It was a live reaction from both of y'all. Explain what was going on. Uh, I, I'm lost to words because I have to admit I have one of the best training partners in the world, and Robert Dunning and I we've been working working hard all year. And it's not about me today. It's about Robert Dunning with a massive PR again. Yes, sir, Robert. Massive PR. Massive PR. You in Gainesville down there training with that great group. Just talk about what's going on in your mind right now. I actually don't even know what I ran, so I'm kind of confused what I ran. It was 09? Yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. I'm lost for words right now. This dude, as crazy as he is, as loud as he is, he always puts me in practice. I'm just thankful I had the opportunity to practice there. You know, the goal, not, not, not done yet. Got to make the team, got to get this medal. Most definitely. So Grant, you don't lose that often. How, does it, how do you keep your composure when you don't see nobody next to you? It's just, a, it's just an act of execution. You know, Robert is probably one of the, the best finishers that, that I've ever trained with. So he helps me out in that aspect. I will coach him up at the start. And I mean, this, it, it, just, it just shows how much work, hard work we've done, man. So. Congratulations to Rob, congratulations to myself. But like I said, uh, I, I'm blessed to have one of the best training partners and everybody heard the James Brown. Yeah. They pay the cost to be the boss. Y'all heard him? Y'all give it up for these gentlemen. Robert Dunning and Grant Holloway. Hey, doesn't that just show, Carrie, the power of training in a group, yeah. of having a really strong training partner, great coaches as well, of course. But, you know, oh. you can even work at each other and encourage each other and push each other f further and faster. Well, and I even think that, that you know, you got to just think that these two are getting better together. And that's what's so cool. You know, Holloway's thinking, I got this young dude chasing me every day in practice, and now he's actually chasing me in the, in the races. And that is what's so fun about all of this. Well, Rob Dunning was saying to us yesterday, wasn't it, his first love is basketball, and he's a Chicago yeah. Bulls fan. But <laughs> there he is to write a picture. And his running off the final barrier was strong as well. That celebration from uh, Grant <laughs> Holloway. Wow. But he Robert Dunning didn't even that. know. He didn't even know. He turned around and he was like, wait, what just happened? And that's when you have those breakthrough races, when you have no idea what just happened. Awesome. It was fun to witness that. What a way to finish a night. Great night's work for Grant Holloway and his training partner, Rob Dunning. <laughs> Conducting proceedings. Well, let's check the final results of that one just to confirm it. And Rob Dunning will want to rub his eyes when he sees this. He came here tonight with a personal best of 13.23. He uh, ran 13.34 to qualify, but 13.09.
is his new PR. Look at that. Grant Holloway 13-0 on the fastest time in the world this year. The world best was 13.03. His own time from uh, Gainesville, Florida, back in the middle of April. He improves it by two one hundredths of a second. Rob Dunning, 13.09, a massive, huge person. But that's a couple of meters quicker than he's ever run before. Jamal Britt, 13.14, for a season's best. And uh, that's good running from him as well, Jamal Britt. He won his first heat in 13.28. That is uh, superb. Cunningham and Crittenden in fourth and fifth. Well, the crowd has stayed on in their hundreds, Kerry. They have, and the young little ones out there that get to chat with the greats like Grant Holloway. It's pretty awesome, and they are so excited to be here watching all the greats. Over to you, Lewis. All right, you heard him say it, Grant Holloway said so you gotta pay the cost to be the boss. And he was the boss of that race. And so now who is going to take control and win this women's 100 meter final? We're about to find out in just a few moments. And so here are the lane assignments for this big final. And they're gonna be introduced and run down to the end for their blocks. And here we go with lane one from Jamaica. This was six in the 2022 Jamaican Championships, Ashanti Moore. In lane two, the 26-year-old American was a silver medalist at the 2022 World Indoor Championships, 2017 NCAA champion, it's Makaya Briscoe. Here tonight from Germany, keeping that international flair as a part of this great event, the 2022 European champion over 100 meters and also the four by one, it's Gina Lukenkemper. In lane five, this 24-year-old American finished fifth at the 2023 U.S. Indoor Championships, Solera Barnes. And rounding out this field, somebody you've been waiting to see all night, the silver medalist at the, at the Tokyo Olympic Games in the 4x1, two-time U.S. champion, it's Aaliyah Hobbs. Leah Hobbs, a spectacular 10.93 to win her heat by, well, three, maybe four meters a couple of hours ago. Now it's time to see her in full force. And I think she'll have a tougher time of it here. Gina Lukenkemper was the winner of the other heat. Lukenkemper's time, 11 seconds exactly. And she'll probably be able to go a little bit quicker here. But Hobbs with 10.93 is going to be tough to beat that wasn't so far off her personal best from last year which she ran in the semi-finals of the u.s championships carry well very briefly before this race gets underway we can go back to t with the winner of the pole vault okay all right i have austin miller with me here the pole vault winner today so austin you said it was a dog fight out there how was it just pole vaulting with that beautiful Ferris wheel in your peripheral? First of all, we couldn't have asked for a better setup today. That runway was freaking gorgeous. We were zooming down that runway right towards that Ferris wheel. And in such a historic place too, with, have, with the 1996 Olympics being here, it's so cool to, to participate in an event like this, an inaugural event like this, that sounds like it's gonna be coming back next year bigger and better. And we're gonna be jumping bigger and better next year. And they're gonna be running faster next year too. Most definitely. So we all know that pole vaulters struggle to fly with their poles, <laughs> which y'all need to compete with. So we're trying to spread some pole vault flight awareness. Just give us a few comments on that subject. I mean, it's not uncommon for someone, my, I myself last year ended up going over to Europe and the airline would not take me, let, let me take my poles with me. So you have to go over and you have to make it work, borrow people's poles. But if there are any airline workers in here, take pity on us poor pole vaulters, please. <laughs> we're just got, trying to go over there and make a living. We're just trying to do the thing that we love. And so if we come up and we're trying to get our bag on the plane, I promise you, I know it looks like it's not gonna fit on the plane. I swear to God, it will fit on that plane. 
<laughs> well, we're going to spread some awareness for that for sure. Y'all, make some noise for Austin Miller. Well, you heard the shout out. You got any spare air tickets in your back pocket? There's a few vaulters would just love to be on the receiving end. Well, I think Delta, who is, has their main hub here in Atlanta, needs to hear these guys out. It was a subtle call out for help, wasn't it? <laughs> Delta, do you hear us? Delta, 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 kid, I help you, help you, help you. So there is Aleya Hobbs. She goes in lane three, right in the center. The American record holder, 60 meters indoors. She is the second fastest athlete in history at 60 meters behind Irina Privalova's world record over 60 meters of 6.92. That was in 1993, Woo! 30 years ago. And Aleya Hobbs uh, setting that US record over 6.94. Duken Kemper. Could be her main challenger here, the winner of the uh, first heat in 11 seconds exactly. Looking Kemba, remember the uh, European champion last summer, over 100 meters in front of the home crowd in that fabulous Olympic Stadium in uh, Munich. Built for the 72 Olympics, and you go in there and it still looks futuristic. It's an incredible structure. So, into their blocks. Ashanti Moore of Jamaica goes in lane one. Makia Briscoe. Makai Briscoe goes in uh, two, second in a heat in 11.01. Aleah Hobbs, 10.93. She won the first heat fast, by far the quickest in the heats. Look at Kemper in four, Salira Barnes in five. Really good start then from Makai Briscoe. Briscoe leading over the first half, certainly. Hobbs has got some work to do to come back in there. And here she comes. Is she going to get there or is she not? It's going to be very tight at the line. She does. Snatches it. I reckon she only got the lead about two strides out. Wow, 10.99 again, not as quick as her first round win, 10.93, but she got the job done. She definitely got the job done. You know, Leah Hobbs coming back from that broken hand, not having quite the training that she's wanted the last couple weeks, coming around now, but you could see that. She just used that speed that she had, didn't give in, and she's just starting peeps. She's ready to go this outdoors. And without a broken hand, she's dangerous. Absolutely. And she has been through the mill too, Alea Hobbs. Knee surgery on her left knee back in 2015, her right knee in 2018. She had bone on bone. She was on crutches for 30 days each time after those surgeries. And then, as you say, winning the US indoor title back in the middle of February, falling over and breaking her wrist in, in, in doing so. But did she have to work from this? Briscoe there, second to right, led, I reckon, for about 90 meters maybe 95 meters she did she really had a great race briscoe was right there the entire way putting that pressure on really making Aliyah hobbs win that race outright it's gonna be a fun outdoor season with those two boy oh boy over to ut I got our top two finishers right here. Before we even get started, y'all, go ahead and throw y'all L's up, because y'all Louisiana ride or die. Throw them up. Throw them up. Okay, period. <laughs> so y'all trade together. There's no surprise See y'all come one and two. So just talk about being able to line up against your training partner. Yeah, we work hard day in and day out, every day at practice. So it just felt like practice out here, training with the best in the world, running with the best in the world, and it felt good today. Most definitely. Now, Aaliyah, this is your first time racing in Atlanta. They've been showing you so much love. Just talk about the atmosphere. Uh, the fan base is amazing. And everybody was hearing my name. That just kind of gave me some more confidence. Maybe want to give them a show. Most definitely. So, Louisiana is up right now, LSU. So, let's go ahead and give them what they want to see. It's a what? Grand I'm telling you, it has been so much fun this weekend, just being in the hotel with all these athletes. They're fired up. They are ready to have a great season. And they love competing against each other. That's the best part about it. Well, they better get used to it. There's a, an awful lot of summer to come. Dozens of competitions for these sprinters as well in the coming months. They do have that luxury of being able to compete if necessary three times a week, let's say, yeah. if they can get air tickets to fly from all those different European venues and uh, earn a few bucks. They're professionals, these athletes. They work so hard. All those many, many months of effort condensed into just a few weeks or a few peak weeks of competition in the summer months.
let's have a, another look at this. Now, certainly, it was uh, Makaya Briscoe, Briscoe, second to right, who led. She's still leading here, I reckon. You can see, yeah, there about, I reckon about eight meters out was when Aaliyah Hobbs got the lead. And she didn't win by much. 10.99 to 11.02. It was very, very tight indeed. And uh, boy, look at Kemper. 11.16 in fifth will be frustrated with that result, the German. But Aaliyah Hobbs separated from the rest rather nicely by the 10.99 to 11, whatever. Yeah, I mean, those two really put on a show. You know, I, I, I want to see what practice is like between those two. But I do think the big thing with Aaliyah Hobbs is she's saying that, you know, she hasn't really been quite herself, but she is surprising herself and she's really excited about the outdoor season. And maybe it was good. She's a new mom. She had time with her, her baby. She, you know, obviously no one wants her to have to have hand surgery or any type of injury but just maybe a reset before the next two summers which are very big summers with the world championships and the olympic games there it is hobbs from uh, makaya briscoe who made her work for every millimeter that she got there the win by the crowd loving this coming up last race of the night the men's 150 meters final Skyview wheel continues to turn and the wheel of uh, racing has gone from great to greater to fantastic this evening as the evening has worn on and just one race left it is the men's 150 meters and uh, it is a race packed with big names and significance I'm in this just, early season I'm just watching to the left of where we are and you can see these athletes getting ready to get it introduced and there's just so much going on in their minds, you know? You can just see that intensity. So much work goes into that short race. You know what I love, <laughs> though, is the contrast between so many world-class sprinters, the best guys we've got in this generation of sprinters, and Usain Bolt. You think about him, how chill he was every time before a major championship. He'd be, he'd be, he'd be high five was he with chill, kids. Huh? Was he chill? He oh, was putting well, on he that show. He made a very good impression of, of yeah. not of being very exactly. chill if he was. You know, he's yep. the best actor in the world. That was Oscar territory if he, <laughs> if he was under stress. Over to Lewis. All right, everybody, we are close to starting our final event of the night. And I'm predicting this is going to be the fireworks before the fireworks right now in this men's 150 meter dash. In lane one, from Great Britain. In lane one, from Great Britain, the two time silver medalist from the European Championships, please welcome Nathaniel Mitchell Blake. He'll be running out of lane four, just 19 years of age, just had a birthday recently. The bronze medalist at the 2022 World Championships, fourth at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Please welcome Arian Knighton. In lane five, representing Jamaica, the 2017 World Under 18 Champion over 400 meters, it's Antonio Watson. This next athlete in lane two is a 2022 African champion over 100 meters from Kenya, Ferdinand Omanyala. And our final athlete tonight, 
the two-time world champion and American record holder at 200 meters, 300 meters indoor, the ultimate entertainer, a man of fashion, art, and all things eclectic, and he's hoping to do something special for you tonight, and he's already down the track, American Noah Lyles. Start of this 150, the very far end of this blue track. Just so you can mark your cards, the world record by Usain Bolt 14.35. But this is more about the big clash, I think, between Noah Lyles, the uh, third fastest man in history at 200 meters, and Arian Knight, the pretender to the throne, just 19 years old, bronze medalist at the World Championships last year over 200 meters, and then the fifth fastest man in history over 200 meters. Lyles and Knight, can anybody get in amongst them, Kerry? I don't know, don't sleep on Omanyala. He's got some big things he wants to do this year. He's from Kenya. He's got some PBs and some records he wants to break. For him to get the African record, it's 14.99. And Omanyala holds the African record for 100 at 9.77. The Kenyan, that was in Nairobi back in 2021, the 27 year old. The uh, B race, by the way, was won by Jareem Richards in 14.83, the man from Trinidad and Tobago. As they're called to their blocks, there's very little time wasted here as these athletes are called in. But you can see uh, most of them loading into their blocks and just getting a feel for this one as they're strolling back very, very calmly as Antonio Watson of Jamaica. He's never run this distance before, Watson. He's a good 400 meter runner. He's a 45-7, 400 guy, 10-2 for 100. He's up against it here because this is a field packed with talent. Over in lane one to the right of picture is Nathaniel Mitchell Blake, second in the European Championships back in 2018 in Berlin and last year in Munich, both those championships in Germany. Uh, he took silver medals in those European Championships, over 200. He's twice an Olympian in 2016 and 2021. Mitchell Blake, though, out in lane one, and Antonio Watson out in lane five to the left. They are very much the outsiders in every respect because the big names, Omanyala in two, Lyles in three, Knight in four, that is where we expect the action. Well, so much competition between Knight and Lyles last year on the track at Nationals, at the U.S. Nationals. There's lots of hype between how these two We'll start this outdoor season together. Look at them right there, showing again respect for each other, wanting to run fast. Well, no lies. Do you remember? I remember calling him setting a world best for 300 in Albuquerque about five years ago. And I remember thinking then, this guy, and he was so much younger than this guy, he's still only 25. He was, he was either 20 or 21 is going to be so special at 200 meters the strength to run 300 instead of world best indoors and sure enough he has become very very special the second fastest man in history at 200 meters and then dropping down indoors this year really working on his 60. third fastest i should say actually no lines of course behind uh, the great usain bolt's world record so to their blocks then Ferdinand Omenyala of South Af of uh, Kenya, Commonwealth champion, semi-finals of the World Championships last year when he arrived late in Eugene, couldn't give a decent account of himself, but Mitchell Blake in one, Omenyala two, Lyles in three in the center, Knighton in four, second to left, and Watson to the left of picture as they get underway. Really good start from Omenyala, we knew the Kenyan would put the rest of them under pressure. Omenyala, second to right, still leading at the moment, they're coming back in the mode. Are they gonna get their 150 at tough distance? And here comes Noel Lyles, he turns on the burners and pulls it on! Wins by three meters, 14.56 for Noel Lyles. And that, for Noel Lyles, is a new personal best. 14.69 was his PR. Wow. <laughs> oh, Tim, that is amazing. I was a little worried. I'm going to say that. I was a little worried. Omanyala looked great. And so did Knighton, but Lyles showed his composure and really poured it on those final meters. And look at this. He is pumped. He is excited. Look out, everyone. We are going to have a fun spring and summer. That is the third fastest time in history. Noah Lyles, Leapfrog's Walter Dix 
Prince of the USA into third place, 14.56 is confirmed. Erin Knight in second, 14.85. Ferdinand Dominiala, who started so fast, third, 14.89. Watson, 14.93, Mitchell Blake bring up the rear, 15.05. Woo, I felt like I just ran that race. <laughs> that was awesome. Watch it here. Here it is again. Well, I'll tell you what, that's just what um, Noah Lyles needed. It was Omen Yala taking him on over the first 70 or 80. And Lyles, that, the 200 meter runner's strength came to its uh, came into force over the last 30 meters or so, and he pulled away by a big, big margin. 14.56 to 14.85, that is a three meter gap. And Omanyala, he got out hard. You can see him there in lane two, and he set a new African record tonight, beating that by 0.1 seconds. 14.99 was the old one, 14.89 tonight. But it was all Noah Lyles in the last 50 meters. He showed his strength, his speed, his composure. Ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed one of the greatest races ever. Well, Lyle's just what the sport needs, and I think uh, T can have a chat with some of those guys. How you feeling? My mouth's so dry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got two fast gentlemen with me right now, Mr. Noah Lyle's. Noah, Noah, you're one of my favorite athletes to cover. You bring the entertainment, you bring the, you want all the smoke, you bring the fashion, you break records, the list goes on. Why do you put so much into this sport? Because if I don't, who will? Yep, that's a fact, that's a fact. So, you know it's a lot of 1v1 things going on, on on the internet, so if you could pick somebody to do a 1v1 with, who would you pick? Anybody and everybody. Anybody? I don't believe I got an opponent. Cause okay. they always, they gonna win. But when I lose, you ain't never gonna beat me again. Okay, y'all heard him. Well, congratulations on your win today and looking more forward to you in the future, okay? Appreciate it. Definitely. So, Mr. Ferdinand O'Mala, first of all. <laughs> they came out here for you. Now we talked about this African record that you just broke yesterday. We just talked about this and you came out here and did it. Like, just talk about what's on your mind. Um, the main target was just to come and run fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got out of the blocks well and just to maintain the form. And it's an African record, so we just hope that we get other races like this again. So you gotta say some nice, you gotta say some nice to these people out here. They show you so much love. Say something nice to the people that's out here supporting you. Thank you so much uh, for coming to support me. I promise you a very fabulous year this year. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. What an incredible race. Noah Laos and Mr. Ferdinand Omamiala. Well, he is a breath of fresh air, Noah Lyles, for this sport. A showman almost without compare in the uh, rain shadow of the retirement of his same boat. Really, the sport needs great personalities, people with charisma and excitement and intelligence, athletes that make you buzz with anticipation when they're in the blocks. And Noah Lyles is one of those, the third fastest time in history behind Usain Bolt and Tyson Gay. Tyson Gay running his time back in 2010 on a, a street track in Manchester, UK. Bolt's winning time. The previous year, his world record, 2009, on the streets of uh, Manchester in the north of England. But Noah Lyles doing it here in Atlanta, confirming just how quick this track is. And that is just the seal of approval this event needed tonight. Noah Lyles running that quick. There it is, 14.56 for Noah Lyles, third fastest time in history, and hardly any win to help him. Imagine a one and a half meter win behind him. That would have come down a bit, that 14.50s. It's Eric Knight, 14.85 for the pretenders of the throne. That is some debut at 150, 14.85. Ferdinand Dominiala, 14.89, erases the record of Frankie Fredericks. Remember him? Fabulous man who finished second behind Michael Johnson at the Atlanta Olympics back in 1996 over 200 meters. And uh, Antonio Watson, 
14.93. Carrie, we'll go down to you. All right, Spencer now with Adidas and Mark Wetmore with Global Athletics and Marketing. It's been quite the night. What was your favorite part? Oh, damn. I, that 150 meter finish with Noah was, uh, was unbelievable. Tamari Davis, superb in the 100, 150, it was, I think. And then obviously at Tia Jones coming through in the 100 meter hurdles, phenomenal. And Grant Holloway and Robert Dunning. I mean, so many, so many performances I could carry on about, but, but amazing. Impossible if nothing, right? Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> Mark, you brought so many great athletes here to Atlanta. You must be pleased with the evening as well. Yes, we really were. And of course, most of them were Adidas athletes, so they love coming here and running. But, uh, you know, it's just such a, the thing I appreciated the most was just the incredible atmosphere here. You know, the Atlanta Track Club did a great job of bringing all these people out here. And this has been a great partnership for us, been a great partnership for everybody for Adidas. You know, I was lucky enough to have a few of the athletes who won today, so <laughs> that worked out great for me. But. Uh, no, it was just really fun. It was a very exciting event, and what a great place to hopefully make this a new home. Well, we've been teasing that, right? You just said, hopefully make this a new home. Are we coming back, do you guys think? Oh, we're definitely coming back. We've been talking about what we can do better next year already, so, yeah, we're definitely coming back. All right, well, you heard it here. All right, Tim. Thank you, Carrick. Yeah, two very, very heavily invested uh, gentlemen there, either side of Carrick, both very, very happy and wonderful to hear they're talking about next year already. The performances of the night will take your pick. 13.01 for Grant Holloway in the 110 meter hurdles. That was the fastest time in the world this year. Noah Lyles, 14.56, the third quickest time in history. Tia Jones taking the, the uh, name of Kenny Harrison, 12.50 to 12. Uh, 53 in that women's 100 meter hurdles. Carrie, I'm just talking about some of the best performances of the night. It was special. The 600s on the road to all of the stuff on the track to the pole vaults. I mean, we were in for such a great show. I loved it. I loved seeing all the, the people from around Atlanta coming here and racing too. And, and then obviously this morning kicking it off with the Mod 5K. That was awesome. 4,000 people ran for him. It's been a really special day. Ticked a lot of boxes. Youngsters have enjoyed their day. Experienced athletes and world champions have enjoyed their day. We have enormously as well, and so have thousands of spectators here in Centennial Olympic Park in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. We look forward to seeing you again next year here in Atlanta. Bye-bye.